the intro happened, so you know what that means. And I guess we can actually play a little bit of this. Because although we're at Friday Night Inferno, today screams the first step on the beaten path to Ticket to Paradise. So as if we were doing this live, just give me a transition, a smooth transition with a- What the you already know good day could be some fine day here. Of the result, two and day brought with the anomaly being normal cars. It is the end of the road. Or I guess I, the start of the road. <laughs> Admittedly, we are live. It is premiere time. The energy is still here, live chat. You're still there. I should be there as well. I hope y'all are ready. Did I, did I go a little bit? That's good enough. It's centered enough. We have. A show, which will be the same amount of matches as a regular show, but it'll probably be a little bit shorter than a regular show because we want to put up all the polls, or I'll be doing them real time. I want to set them up. It'll be, I think, a smoother experience, but nothing quite beats live, so we will be back next Friday live for Fractures edition of On the Beaten Path as we go week by week by week all the way to Ticket to Paradise, Ticket to Paradise, Ticket to Paradise, May. Fourth. May the fourth be with you on that day. May the fourth be with whoever <laughs> is, is is gonna be there. So without further ado, I need to remember that I don't have to wait <laughs> to do things. <laughs> I gotta start the show. <laughs> so let's do just that. The show doth begin. Right. Yes, it does. Here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight. Yep, the show doth begin, and it doth begin right here, right now, with Miss Nahida because it's loading. I, I realized I should have preloaded it. Look, it's it's still it's still the same energy, <laughs> but it's perfect because this music can calm down. And we can start listening to Inferno. Perfect. Nahida had help escaping her room in her actual franchise. This time, she'll have no help escaping the cage. It is Nahida's open challenge, Nahida's room escape, and it all begins right now. Who do y'all think Nahida will be facing this very first open challenge event? Well, how will Nahida fare? Not having to pin or submit the opponents, just having to get out. I'm excited to find out. Let's find out. Right here, right now, watch what? out. The cage is there, and the... The match it doth begin. Here she is! The little bean! Everyone's favorite little radish, Nahida, is starting off. Nahida, best of luck to you. This is the Dendro Archon from uh, Genshin Impact, who we just, or I guess not we, uh, Stream AV recently saved, also, I guess, recently helped do plenty of things. Uh, Makes some questionable decisions more as of late, but you know what? Still a bean, she's still learning, and uh, right now she's going to be learning to escape. Good luck to her. Especially for her first opponent. But who will that be? That's the big question. That's what's on everyone's mind. So let's find out. Right here. Right, right now. Nahida, <laughs> do your thing. I can only imagine what you guys are saying. I, I imagine there will be some things like Cherry saying, Oh, my poor being in danger. But uh, in danger against who? Maybe it's a pushover. Uh, I'm not sure who this is. Oh. Uh, oh. Oh, that's Rosalina. Oh, that's that's the Ro that's the Rosalina. Uh, <laughs> not not and and she's in her princess gear this time. We saw Rosalina compete recently in what is very much a joke, or it better be a Sunday event. <laughs> in full princess attire this time around, Rosalina no longer looking. She said, "I don't need to dress in my athletic gear to beat this small bee." And it is Archon versus Princess of the Galaxy. Who's gonna walk it on top? We got ourselves a match. I can put this controller down. I can just endure it. <laughs> Let's get around and call this. Right down the middle, Nahida. 
Rosalina. And to start off, look at the size differential. Nahida is going to be fighting an uphill battle, but gets off quick moves on Rosalina. But all it takes is one big maneuver like that, and Rosalina already evens this matchup. A big kick. Nahida catches it. Now think about it this way. Nahida, not well known for brawling, not well known for fighting, but you know what? She's quick. But when you look at the height of Rosalina, as she <laughs> nearly destroys Nahida, I was going to say she's so tall that she's already basically at the top of the cage now, but here's the problem. She came dressed for success, not dressed to win a match. Those heels, as the strength of Nahida on display, didn't know she had it in her. Keep in mind, she has to climb that cage in heels. That may be just enough to give Nahida the advantage, but Rosalina has taken it to the small B at this moment in time. But I'm going to say, honestly, it's not completely uneven. But after that wicked leg drop with the wicked legs of Rosalina, it might be. And she has the wherewithal to... <laughs> With with that size still flying as if she flying as if she were light as a feather. No, oh my gosh, she was she was trying to walk out the front door. She was trying to say, hey, get me out of the front door. That's something we've never seen before. Could it happen today? That's one thing that Nahida may have to realize. Maybe walking out the door is the best <laughs> the best means of escape. No, with the door right there, she still decides to climb. No, she's not climbing. She's flying! My gosh, the flips on that Sinta Nahida went wild. She's got a signature built up. If she's able to use it against Rosalina, she might have the time to escape. In fact, she's calling for it right now. Rosalina wisely using that bar saying, hey, I need to get out of here. Or more so, stop this beam from getting out of here. But Nahida, quick enough to get elbows right to the top of the skull. Low DDT because really when Rosalina's on one knee she's the same height as an average person or even taller. <laughs> I must admit the Nahida on one knee. Rosalina still eclipses Nahida but that might not be enough to win this match because now Nahida has been able to take control. Still calling for the door saying come on please open the door. She's gonna get up soon please. Open the door, no. Oh wait, reversal by Nahida. She was ready for her. Do you think Nahida may have used her 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 brain, her big old brain, which is, as these kicks go flying, another knee dropping the competitor to one knee so she can get a better shot, a better angle, the kicks from Nahida on every side, but with the last kick. The power of the princess is starting to prevail as she goes flying nearly halfway across the ring Nahida down and I'm ooh, so curious after that princess DDT that DDP Nahida stunned and Rosalina might be able to just walk out right now no she says I don't think that's gonna be enough stays right back up lifts Nahida up Oh, but Nahida on her feet. Nahida on her feet. And out of nowhere. Shades of Yosuke with that Yosuke too. Maybe she's been watching tapes. She's been knowing, finding out the effective moves. Wicked combos. Taking down the princess again. Rosalina in trouble. And is she going to climb out? No. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. She was going for the Dendro reaction but missed all of it, Rosalina able to get out of the way, and now Nahida in incredible, incredible danger. Another kick. Oh, hold on, Nahida. Oh my gosh, she's gonna try and make Nahida tap out in a match where that wouldn't even matter. No way you can tap out, no pinfalls in this matchup. It is escape the cage or not. Nahida able to get out of that. Her leg probably starting to feel the after effects as she goes flying. Shades of Rosalina, which she's been doing all matchup today. And this time Nahida starts to climb herself, saying, I don't need the door. Maybe I can just get out of here. And look at the speed that she's climbing up, actually. Because she's so fast with that, she may actually be able to get out, but no, a hit by Rosalina. Rocking Nahida as she's looking to pull her all the way back into the ring. 
Nahida very carefully getting onto the ropes, but Rosalina looking to escape as well. Nahida unsure of where she is for a moment, but hold on, face against the steel grating, and now they both climb. We might see both of them on the top of the cell at the same time. Nahida focused on leaving, but Rosalina focused on bashing the head of Nahida. Thinking about throwing her over. Whoa, whoa, look at that. Rosalina was in danger for a second. Still in danger. And she's going flying to the bottom. Wait a minute. This may be the only opportunity that she has. This may be the chance for her to escape. She's got one leg down. She's got both legs down. And despite the odds, <laughs> despite what it took, a moment of advantage, Nahida steals the show takes the first W of the night. My gosh. Nahira able to knock Rosalina semi-conscious, sends her flying nearly a story, half a story into the ring, and Rosalina's story was over today because Nahira walks out successful now learned how to escape will she take that all the way in every single starting match as we go through ticket to paradise we'll see i'm sure rosalina is not even her toughest opponent but what a tough battle it was at the start congratulations good job on you nahida you survived this one but what the will our our next competitors survive the next match that's the real question that being said I think it's time to bring up one of our little surprises yonder, uh, right here, right now. And that first surprise is on this phone. Let me give him a call right now. We have somebody special backstage. Because I don't want to anything too crazy happening backstage, I got a little assistance. Backstage today, AWE Backstage, you know him, you love him, host of our OC Revolutions. Here we go, hold on. Let me make sure it picks up first. Hello? Loud, oh my gosh. Dirk Madison, hold on, let me put it nah. on, put it on speakerphone uh, for you Speakerphone, guys. okay, that's Dirk. fine. Yes! Dirk, how you doing? I'm doing fantastic. I'm so happy to be back here backstage. That's fantastic. I am happy that you're backstage. Everything going on back there, doing pretty good? Oh uh, yeah, after that first match. All of our competitors for this match are A-OK? -okay. Oh uh, yeah, of course. I, I wouldn't expect anything else. Love to see it. What could possibly go wrong? Alright, Dirk, take it easy. We'll check in with you later. In All fact, right. we might even get some some backstage interviews with you if you need us. So uh, oh. you know, I'm looking forward to it. Thank I you. I am Dirk. a hard interrupt. And with that, I think we're ready to see who Pablo and Asnir picked. I assume there's going to be a poll up right now, and if there's not, whoops, a daisy. <laughs> we'll watch out y'all back in. Watch the tag team match begins right now. Oh my gosh. It's a Genshin kind of night. That is Al Haytham. Al Haytham from Genshin Impact. Notable smart man, but also a potentially harsh talker, if you... Uh, to, say the, to say it as, as light as we can. It's a, I guess it's a real Sumeru kind of night. Al Haytham representing, but who chose Al Haytham? Was it Pablo? Was it Asnir? And the odds, are, you know, we're kind of thinking we could see Al Haytham holding a briefcase in the near future if he and his partner win. Al Haytham's surprising first pick. They could have picked anyone in the universe, but I hear that they agreed to pick these two people because it would be a, a fun little uh, back and forth, but that's all I got from them. We'll see what happens. We'll see what unfolds. Al Haytham, first person out in this tag team matchup. How do you guys think Al Haytham's gonna do? Are you surprised to see Al Haytham? I, I am a little bit, to be honest. We'll see. We will see indeed the current state of the AWE Golden Ticket men's match is glitched and it is Risley. So we'll see who else, you know, 
packs on here. Speaking of Glitch, Glitch will be in action later tonight. Makoto wanted Glitch last man standing. Makoto able to topple all sorts of threats, you know, just by luck in the past. He wants to see if he can do it again tonight. Or will he suffer to the hands of Glitch? We'll see. Ah, uh, this sounds like Asnir is the partner of Al Haytham. That is a... That is a, a very notable team, to be completely fair. I don't want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with these two. That being said, Lee Davy does still need to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Asnir. They're still one-to-one -one in their series before a certain gentleman, a certain gentleman rude boy, uh, <laughs> came through and interrupted uh, their trio series. Maybe they'll have their last match at AV Mania. That would be actually pretty spectacular. I wouldn't mind that. And it'd be great to see, you know, Elite AV n not involved in a, you know, you know, something that causes the world destruction like last time. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of the world staying, you know, not destroyed. Right now, things seem to be pretty tame. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed, to be honest. Now, here's the thing. Who else was chosen? Because this isn't Pablo. The partner of Pablo. Oh, it is Pablo. Okay, well, I have no idea who Pablo's partner is going to be then. Pablo, get out of here. Standard good boy. Now, what I've been told is those uh, those tags on their chest, actually, are um, are kind of um, arcane. They're what give them this uh, this human form in the AWE. Um, Pablo's pure as snow uh, in white color, and then Asnir's very red, like the, the blood of, uh, I guess, many things. <laughs> I was going to say the blood of a demon, but I guess, you know, standard blood in general. <laughs> uh, y y w wake up, wake up, come on, Pablo, come on, you can't go to sleep. Uh, chat, chat, some of chat's rooting for you. I don't know how much chat rooting for you. I can't see the poll. I can see the poll down there, but we'll see just who takes the W this time. Now, if I had to guess Pablo would, uh, you know, choose a, a, another gentleman good boy, you know, not a gentleman rude boy. Out next is... Who is this? Oh, it's Ka- Oh my gosh, Mr. Briefcase in hand. Roommate of Hal Haytham. It's kind of roommate versus roommate. Pablo and Asnir share a room. Kave is here in the AWE. Two competitors that know each other very well on both teams. Could we see Kave trade in that normal briefcase for one container contract for a AWE con I'm sorry, AWE championship match at any time, anywhere? It is 2v2. Clyde in the middle of that ring. Let's get this fight. Start, let's get this let's get this started and ha! I'll hate them. Going after Pablo immediately. This is going to be a standard tag team match, to my knowledge. <laughs> One can only hope these days. Oh, look at that. Big ol' punch. Maybe using the Akasha to get some information in this battle. I digress. He's, go he's still going hard after Pablo. Pablo has not been able to really get a hit in on Al Haytham at all. Like, not at all. Not a single hit. Tags in Asnir and these two have never been in a fight against one another. They've only teamed up together and one missed move and Pablo now trying to show why he is him. Pablo faced Kazuichi, Pimp Kazuichi in what was an insane matchup. One where we thought Pablo was gonna just not exist anymore. We thought Pablo was gonna die and somehow, some way, he won. He was able to come through. That being said, this matchup begins and it's starting to start off hot and it's starting to start off bad for Pablo and Kave because look at this a headbutt to the back of the head if that ain't the most brutal thing you can do to a human being as near though no human being he is a creature from the 39th dimension but Pablo is throwing hands with one right here right now Turn him around, buckle right to the face using the environment to his advantage as Kave gets back up to the ropes Pablo waiting for Asnir to get up, thinking, oh, maybe I can knock him down here. Big ol' shot to the head, drop kick, picture perfect right to the middle of the chest. As Pablo looks to go and target Al Haytham, does just that. And what is this, Pablo going up, DDT onto the apron. Oh, Asnir tried to get an advantage over on Kave, but Kave got the knee up, and Asnir not happy about it. 
dragging Kabe into the ring saying, all right, you want to fight? We can fight. And now it's die versus die. It is uh, roommate versus roommate right now as Pablo gets thrashed. With a power slam, but kips right back up. Goes running. It's the speed of Pablo. The not heavy hands, but the lightning fury that will get you. The flurry of hits. But maybe the power game is just too much roll up. For one, imagine if it were three. Al Haytham would have been surely disappointed, but a big uppercut sends Pablo down. But a hot tag's made. Pablo luckily able to roll out. Here's the thing though, Kaveh, very first time in an AWE ring, same for Al Haytham admittedly, but a kip up by Asmir, clothesline, Kaveh is trying to prove his worth immediately by taking down the big man Asmir, big combos, chops, kick to the knee, is he gonna go for a low DDT, no, goes for a neck breaker, into a ooh, big old splash there, alright Kaveh's got the moves, Kaveh, rolled up, has no help, will have to kick out by himself, that's one, does just that, almost already has a signature though, as Al Haytham looks to <laughs> go against Kaveh now, that's the thing, weakness, you're gonna know your roommate best, Al Haytham is gonna know Kaveh best, but Kaveh's also gonna know Al Haytham best, who's gonna get the upper hand when it's roommate versus roommate, each of them knowing each other's weaknesses, one, two, Already a two count on Kaveh, while Al Haytham's barely taken any damage in this fight. All these things are looking so bad for Pablo and Kaveh, but it ain't over. Especially with the reversals like that, a shot to the back of the kneecap. Here's the thing, Al Haytham has not been able to get a lot of moves in this matchup, has not taken any damage, but more importantly, he hasn't been able to work up any signatures, any finishers. Kave has a signature on the ready. If he's able to hit it, this match turns around in the blink of an eye, in an instant, essentially, as the dragging didn't work. Kave is still too fresh. Oh, but look at this. Is he thinking about dragging again? No, instead, throwing and going for a beautiful Hurricane Ron in the middle of the ring. Kave looking for the tag as near back in. As near's already been brutalized in this fight with everybody who's been facing him. But he's, he's, uh, I was going to say, if he's able to <laughs> if he was able to essentially get out of that, reverse that, did not happen in the slightest, instead ate a wicked clothesline and now has to deal with Asnir, who essentially, I, I will admit, is busted open. Hasn't taken a ton of damage, but is, I'm sorry, has taken a fair bit of damage to the head. In fact, I think all of the hits that Kaveh might have done might have been right to the head of Asnir. Targeted attack. Asnir is actually the one who's in the most danger, especially as Pablo continues to target the upper back and neck of Asnir. Oh, hold on a second. Asnir's got him up, though. And Pablo may be in trouble. His face first to the apron. Asnir knows he can win this any way possible. It can be count out. It can be submission. And especially if he has this clothesline, I'm sorry, this choke slam on the outside of the ring, he did not. Oh, it looked like he thought about doing it to Asnir. I'm sorry, to Kaveh. Asnir tried to do it to Kaveh. He had him up. He had his hand ready for it, but he didn't hit the choke slam. Instead, the arms down. Pablo looking to tag in Kaveh, the fresher opponent. What's it gonna go? How's it gonna go on? Kaveh looking for a stomp. Several stomps right to the back of the neck. Into the pinfall. Al Haytham might have to come in for this one. One, two. Kicked out. And just get a, a, got a cheap shot, actually, on Al Haytham. Or from Al Haytham onto Kave. Kave. Working every body part of the big man, Asnir. Maybe realizing, I don't think I can beat Al Haytham. But all I need to do is beat Asnir. And with that kick to the midsection, what does he have in his arsenal? Fairy tale ending! The box is locked on this one, but right there, Al, Al Haytham was ready. Al Haytham was ready and willing and able, and hold on, what is he thinking here? Goodness gracious, looked like he was going for a top rope springboard, coup de gras, but a wicked kick might keep Kaveh down one, two, just two. We got a whole lot of match left in this one. Tag's been made. Al Haytham. Kaveh. <gasps> Super kick, and another one right to the back of the neck. Oh, but 
I'll tell you what, I'll hate them, might be ready for him. Oh, maybe not, Kave, <laughs> Kave acting like a true superstar in this one, but I'll hate them, once again, too smart, too calculating. Asnir may be looking at someone to choke slam right here, right now, no, goes for a butterfly power bomb. The butterfly effect for two, not even two because Pablo was there to break it up, but he's looking for it again. Except this time, nothing changes, gets all of it, doesn't go directly for the pinfall, rolls into it instead, and that is one, and Pablo doesn't go to help, Kave has to burn resiliency. Kave had to burn resiliency because Pablo said, no, no, I, I, <laughs> I shouldn't help again, that would be impolite, I already got my one. Uh, hold on, tossed into the, the corner, the right corner as well. But doesn't go for the tag. What is Kaveh thinking here? Oh my gosh, up and down Panama Sunrise! But he left him all the way in the correct corner. Might be a rope break. No. Yes, it is. And Clyde, the perfect referee, a well-trained seasoned veteran, sees it immediately. Uses his entire peripheral to see just something move. He's like, oh, hold on. That right there. Oh, hold on. That reversal <laughs> might have been exactly what he needed, I was going to say. Asner's actually in a lot of trouble. Especially if he's able to get him over to the corner and make the tag, and he does. What do they got going together? What is this? Ooh, drop kick into the corner. What is this? And look at that. <laughs> Very effective tag team maneuver, one I don't think we've ever seen. I wonder if they work together to get that one done. Into the cover. One, two, Asnir kicks out. Al Haytham was also there at the same time. Pablo hidden right between the third eye of Asnir, lifts him right back up. Could he be thinking? Ooh, he tried to go for a wicked clothesline, put all of his everything into it, but got caught with a neck breaker for his troubles. But Pablo with a kick right to the top of the skull. Missing Wally with that drop kick. Asnir said, nope, I'm out. <laughs> he said, nope, I'm out. Tagging in once again the nearly completely fresh Al Haytham. Al Haytham has been playing a smart game. And after that spine buster, that book spine buster, this may be close to the end for Pablo and for Asnir. I'll hate them having to refocus on Pablo instead. Pablo's going to need a sick reversal because I think I'll hate them looking to finish this one off. Elbow right to the heart and to the face. Had the angle so his forearm caught the chin and the, the bone of his elbow caught his heart. And now they, oh, I was going to say they tag in together. Asnir with a cheap shot. And look at this, a... Choke slam of his own, but it was like a choke slam, and he sent him around the world into the slam. Goodness gracious, Al Haytham hath no mercy. Climbs to the top rope, proving to be an all around competitor. Pablo not looking, not looking to give up yet. But Al Haytham, I, I was gonna say, it looks like Al Haytham has really done more damage to himself. <laughs> than his opponents have done to him. Look at this. Oh, hold on, reversal. I was gonna say, look at this, he's just been in complete control, but that may be, maybe that one second was enough. Oh, that super kick missed. But that DDT sure didn't, and Pablo now both die or busted wide open. Tagging made to Asnir, and that's admittedly what the boys want. If they can keep Asnir in, there's a shot that they may be able to take the W on this one. Pablo able to kick out. No resiliency pop. Kave would have been just a little too late. Pablo lifting. Oh no, got lifted up. Didn't get lifted up. Got hit with a drop kick instead. Pablo standing tall. Asnir seems to be the weak link on the Al Haytham Asnir team. Double A. With a. It looked like a, a slow burn, Salida del Sol. And Kave. Getting the tag. No resiliency. 
but still could win this fight, especially if, oh, well, maybe Asner had something up his sleeve because that roll-up gives us just one. Kave still got fight. Kave still got a whole lot of fight. But one, one or two finishers might be the end of this matchup for him. And as he's up, he's going for it again. Wait a minute. Ooh, fairy tale ending again. Once again, I'll hate them going to be right there to break it up. Right there to break it up. And Kaveh's realizing, I gotta do a whole lot of work, huh? He's looking to do it again, still missing with that double stomp, and gets caught instead in that butterfly bomb directly. Center of the ring, turns him over, and Pablo has to be there to break it up, or that could be curtains. Pablo <laughs> may just not understand how to be a good tag team partner. <laughs> because Kaveh's had to kick out on his own so many times. Kavi might have to win a, a, essentially a match where he just can't get pinned. If he gets pinned, it might just be curtains for him. Alitham lifts him up. Asner actually interrupts that move, and it may have given Kave a second to breathe going up and over. Tried it at Hurricane Rana, but once again, Alitham just too good. Alitham saying, well, okay, if you wanna <laughs> if you wanna fight so bad, then go ahead and fight. Headbutt. And now Asmir is fighting, has him over, sidewalk slam, pushes him into the pinfall. One, two, Pablo finally making the save. I don't know if Kave was going to kick out of that one. But as he's got him up, we've seen him do this time and time again. Right into the pin again. <laughs> Pablo <laughs> took the scenic route, but he got there in time. <laughs> The other team is dominating. Simply dominating. That being said, no hope is lost yet with a DDT on the outside. Kaveh may be thinking, I might have to win this by countout. <laughs> oh, but here's the thing. Asner saying, there's no shot you're gonna beat us. But wait, is he gonna make the hot tag to Pablo? The hot tag made to Pablo, but a block clothesline. Asner has him right where he wants him, up and down. Suplex essentially turned into a cutter. And now, I thought for a second we were going to see uh, Asner try and climb to the top rope. But Pablo, wait a minute. Pablo's thinking about something, maybe trying to hug him. <clears throat> maybe trying to suplex him, but not working in his favor at all. Sidewalk slam. Pablo's in incredible danger, especially as he drags him over to Al Haytham, and not a single move can be countered. Oh, Pablo. In incredible danger. Rolls out of the ring wisely. But Al Haytham was waiting for him there. He said, all right, you want to be out here? I'll stomp you out out here. That's crazy. Insane. I didn't know Al Haytham was such a fighter. But Pablo's still fighting back, too. They're both, uh, so far, admittedly, on the outside. Oh, but Pablo's hurting. He's on the verge. He's back in the ring, but I think, at the very least, Kaveh's back up for him. Cameraman just showed, thank you, Kuzu Soda. The Kaveh is indeed right back up there, but big elbows. Pablo not giving up yet. The question is, what does he have in store? Nothing, because another reversal by Al Haytham into the pinfall. Just not even one. Kave saying, hey, I'm here for him. That's my little buddy. But Asnir not liking what he's seeing about that. Pablo dragged to the center of the ring. I don't know if I like what Al Haytham has planned here. Lifts him up with ease and a standard suplex. And gets caught... With that again, choke slam all the way around the world. <clears throat> the well educated choke slam. And he looked like he was going for it again. Or something of the like, but a reversal. And that wicked clothesline nearly decapitating Al Haytham. Hold on. Is there a chance that we may be counted? Pablo out a second too soon. Super kick right to the jaw. Uh, 
Looks like he's starting to drag him. Ali them not really all that hurt at all, but now he's busted open. Busted open a little bit earlier than I would have expected. Shot to the arm. Kabe seems to be orchestrating something, but it's not working anymore because Al Haytham has him right where he wants him. Another suplex. Kabe trying to stop the big man from getting tagged in, but instead falls victim again to a butterfly effect. One, two, he missed, and he kicked out! Pablo missed, breaking up the pin, and Kave still kicked out. I don't know how. I have no idea how. Pablo tagging back in wisely because he still has resiliency. Another wicked kick to the face of Asner lifts him right back up. Face buster. Asner injured. And uh, is that a, I was going to say you're going to tag Kave back in, not the case. Pablo listen, uh, lifting Asner back up. Now thinking about a tag team maneuver again. And they're going to get it. They are going to get it, still weakening the arm of Asner, actually getting some effect, realizing the butterfly bomb relies a lot on the base and on the arms. Because of that, weakening that move that is uh, essentially destroyed Kave's spine. But what they have not weakened is Al Haytham. He's just been too much of a beast. Look at his vitality bar. It's still all the way up. <laughs> they haven't been able to hit any of their finishers on this man's. Their only hope is what it looks like right now is to get <laughs> uh, Asner back into the ring or get like a sneaky like submission on Al Haytham. But even so, it's going to take some time. You're going to have to wear this man's down. Kave realizing, oh, I should probably get out of here. Oh, wait a minute. Al Haytham said, no, 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 no. You're mine. Walks over to him. Wicked clothesline. Falls into the pinfall. Pablo breaks it up. Kave now injured as well. Kave feeling the hurt in his chest. He should have felt it a long time ago with all the butterfly effect he's taken from Asnir. Uh, but plucking the leg. Able to get the tag. Pablo, you got a signature. You got three finishers. You got to use them. We know what they are. You can use them, my boy. Can he use them is the real question. Will he use them is the real question. Uh, let's find out. Kick to the back. Another kick to the back. Wearing down the back. Targeted attack. Has him up. All but a reversal by Al Haytham and a clothesline to the back of the neck. Al Haytham starting, just, just really starting to take a little bit of damage. Just starting to take a little bit of, of wear down. Oh, look at this. Kick to the side of the skull. Pablo starting to get worked up and Al Haytham starting to get worn down. Something that I honestly didn't think I would see in this match with how it's been going so far. But he's starting to get worn down. I like them crawling to the corner. Kave said, tag me in. I know just what to do now. Thought about going after. Um, ooh, okay, look at this. I was going to say, thought about... Ooh, <laughs> kick to the gut! I was going to say, he thought about going after Asnir, but instead, that's one. A kick. Breaking up the pin. Asnir still going strong. Oh, but we've seen this before. But still, no finishers hit on Al Haytham. Reversed that into a big slam. And ugh. He headbutt his crotch. Look, y'all, keep it in the bedroom. My gosh. Into, uh, no, he reversed the suplex. Look at that. Hooked the leg on that suplex. That, that is <laughs> as technical as it gets, to be honest. Stopped the hot tag as well, but didn't stop him for too long. I'll eat them all the way back up. Realizing, okay, maybe I don't need that hot tag. Maybe I just need to take out this man's once and for all. But another reversal by Kave. Once again, you know your roommate best. They're countering every move they've got. Big drop kick sending him way away from Asnir. Keeping him away from his partner. Now I hate them forced to be in the ring for much longer. We're starting to see his weaknesses. And maybe that is what his weakness is. The endurance factor. Maybe he doesn't have the endurance. Look at this beautiful. 
That's one thing that I've seen from this team. They have great tag team maneuvers, and they're just a makeshift team right now. <laughs> Stunned on the outside is Al Haytham. Double stomp to the midsection. Both competitors were actually stunned for a while. <laughs> Pablo's out here just jumping over and over again on Al Haytham, but he may pay for it in a second. No, he doesn't pay for it. Wait, hold on. You don't think... <laughs> you, you don't think that this could this could be the countout victory. <laughs> you, you don't believe. Oh, no, it doesn't look like it. Al Haytham made it right back in, and Pablo certainly going to follow, but he's going to be alone in the ring with Al Haytham. And that blocked clothesline may spell disaster for Pablo. All alone with both of them. And he's going to make that tag. Pablo as near. Wait a minute. Good Hurricane Rana. Pablo, you got three finishers, my dude. Oh, but we might be seeing... Another sidewalk slam, and that may be resiliency burn from Pablo. One, two, he gets it. No resiliency? <laughs> huh? <laughs> In my mind, I was like, oh yeah, he used resiliency. He didn't. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Pablo was popping up. Look at how little vitality he has. He's climbing to the top rope. And look at this 450 splash. I'll hate them there to break it up. Asmir is in incredible trouble because he's going for it again. Pablo hits a second one. He is hurting himself after that one. Crawls into the pinfall, but Kavi, you're gonna have to wait a minute. Hold on a second. <gasps> I'll hate them was too late. Resiliency burned Asmir. Resiliency burned Kave. <laughs> I was gonna say if Pablo decides to go to the top rope again, <laughs> that could be curtains. But it wasn't. It was not Curtin's. Hold on, he's got him up. Asnir <laughs> is in trouble. I think we might have to call Pablo somewhat of a, a comeback king because if you look at the bars right now, if you looked at the bars 10 minutes ago, you would say, oh yeah, <laughs> Pablo, Cave, they're cooked. But if you look at them right now, this is a very close matchup. <laughs> Al Haytham just stayed out of the ring as much as possible, but it is a very close matchup. Has Asnir up? Wait a minute, I thought it was going to be an Alabama slam, but no. Still targeting the head and neck. Ooh, look at this! From the... From the springboard! 450! One! But a rope break! He was too close! Al Haytham was busy running around in circles! That was almost Pablo's moment! Oh, but it still might be his moment. Look at this. He sends Asnir flying. He's dialing it up. 619. And tags in Kave. Pablo started popping off. <laughs> he hit three finishers and a signature has another one on the ready. Any move at this one, I think, takes Asnir out of the fight. If Al Haytham doesn't come in quick enough. But unfortunately, he did. Kave not happy about it. Thought about taking out. Hold on. He's going to the top rope himself. Uh, Asnir uh, wisely moving out of the way. He's saying, I got to get out of here. He's saying, that's fine. I'll take out Kave too. I'm sorry. I'll take out Al Haytham too. Oh, he stepped down into a drop kick. Kipped right back up. Oh, what a wicked knee strike. Did you see how that rocked Al Haytham? Oh my gosh! Maybe we should be letting Kave cook at this juncture. Drags him over to the corner. Oh, but he got out of that like that. I've never seen anyone, like, get out of the corner quite like that. Oh, but we've seen him do this before. Up, around, oh, the world. The well-educated chokeslam and Pablo not gonna break it up. A step too late. And Al Haytham and Asmir go on to Golden Ticket. My gosh, Pablo, if for some reason you, you knew better how to actually get into the ring, <laughs> you cooked in the later half of that match. But at the end, Kave is even the one who took the pin. 
congratulations to the both of them. I'll hate them. <laughs> As near. <laughs> they didn't work together super well. But Kaveh cooked. <laughs> As near held out for as long as he could. And that's all they needed. Good job to them. Now, let's move on to uh, the next match. They go on, those two, Golden Ticket, rest in peace Kave, rest in peace Pablo. They'll likely have one more opportunity in that last chance battle royale, but for right now, watch the time you back in. What the time? We're gonna continue on with the show. Coming up next. Good tag team match, good tag team match indeed. Oh, let me actually, uh, let me put my headphone back in here. Don't want them to die. <laughs> we have... Or rather, we had... A tie. Golden Ticket Voting saw a tie between Spooky from Spooky's Jump House... Uh, Jump Scare Mansion, that's what it's called. And Monica, just Monica, from Doki Doki Literature Club. Next week, the tournaments will begin, the matches will begin to decide which of your votes will go on to that golden ticket matchup, but we have to decide who actually gets sixth place here. Monica, Spooky, they'll be going 1v1 to see who gets it right now. What the Let's find out who it is. Coming out first. Spooky is here. Look into the dead eyes. The eternally happy smile. She is... Admittedly, a little terrifying. A little scary. A little... She's very scary. I'm a little spooked by Spooky. <laughs> but will Monica be spooked by Spooky is the real question. She's gotta go one-on-one -on -one with the ghost. <laughs> I'd be scared if I were her. We're about to find out Spooky. Oh my gosh, look at Spooky looking to rock out, you know what? Yeah, Spooky, never mind, I'm not scared. Yeah, no, I'm still frightened. I'm still rather terrified. <laughs> well, I got a text message from Dirk Madison. Oh, let me see. Oh, cute. And from Dirk said he was just congratulating Nahida backstage. Gave her a high five, then took a picture together. It was real cute. Oh, look. Monica. Now here's the thing, <laughs> Monica has um, had mixed reaction to some of her matches, um, last year she was in this tournament, did not make it, this year she's in this tournament, um, she might make it, who knows, she's got a lot of work to do, and given her performance recently, we saw her try to get a rope break in a match where there were no rope breaks, in a match where we actually couldn't blame the referee for not seeing the rope break, we, it was just... <laughs> Uh, she forgot the rules. That being said, I've heard that she's been studying the rule book. Will that be enough? Or will she fall victim to the ghost standing opposed to her? We'll find out in just a moment's notice. Spooky, Monica, best of luck to you. Put on a show for the people. Who will be fighting next week in a triple, th uh, triple threat match? Let's see. Two out of three falls. I believe anything might go in this fight. And uh, essentially, uh, what they may be experiencing the next time they battle. Uh, it'll be extreme rules. It'll be triple threat action. Wicked clothesline right to the chest. And a stomp. Ooh, she's got her right on the wrist. One foot on the wrist. Yeah, is she not wearing shoes? Y'all, someone get some shoes on her. Come on. <laughs> the internet, uh, get some shoes on her. The, uh, you can't have your feet showing on the internet. That's crazy. That's crazy. Oh, look at that. Monica was getting her, her butt handed to her by a ghost, which, you know, admittedly. <laughs> admittedly, I mean, like, that makes sense. Spooky with the knees up. But Monica firing back, rallying back. Overhand chops. And a kick knocking Spooky down. Getting out of the ring. But Monica not letting her get a moment to breathe. And a Centon, but that Centon seems to be her weakness because Spooky's countered it every single time. And a suplex on the outside. Stomp to the face of Miss Monica. 
Now will it just be Monica moving on or will Spooky jump scare <laughs> Monica and, and send her scared senseless? We'll see. Monica crawling back into the ring. Falls account anywhere in this fight. Upper hands, lower hands, upper cuts, <laughs> lower cuts. <laughs> spooky tossed outside of the ring. Jeez Louise, Monica with the power to toss Spooky so far. Couldn't bounce against the ropes. Admittedly, this match fairly even. Monica already built up a thing, uh, finisher and signature. Spooky just short of getting a finisher. But Monica, I think, looking to to end this one early, tossing Spooky in the middle of the ring. Walking in. Tossing her into the ropes. What is she thinking here? Heavy shot. Slap to the midsection. Looks like she's going after the knee. The knee of Spooky. Oh, uh, but hold on. Monica surprisingly and, and very very much in control. Thought about diving again. Got <laughs> got stuck on the ropes. Maybe ran a little too fast. Deep arm drag by Miss Monica. Spooky up. Oh, uh, looked like she was going for a finisher there. Reversal. Oh, <laughs> that was a reversal though. She just sl <laughs> slapped the taste out of her. Goodness gracious. Neck breaker. Boom. Goodness gracious, Monica. Nasty with that maneuver right to the back of the neck of Spooky. And it hurts so much, apparently, that Spooky actually had to pop resiliency. Now, one has to wonder, you, uh, uh, <laughs> is Monica going to be able to beat a ghost? Because right now it's looking pretty good for her. Still just tossing Spooky outside of the ring. And I think that's her plan. Give herself as much room to breathe as possible. Give Spooky no chance to jump scare her. Spooky tossed right back into the ring. Monica looking to dismantle this ghost. Swinging neck breaker right onto the ear, onto the mat. Chop. Oh, what has she got going on here? Another swinging neck breaker. Goodness gracious. Monica, I, I hate to say it, but she's, <laughs> she's learned a lot. <laughs> She's learned so much, and now she's got a steel chair saying, I don't need to learn anything if I can beat you with a weapon. And beat her with a weapon, she did. That chair did not phase through poor Spooky. Got all of it with that hit. That's one. That's two. Spooky still kicks out. Spooky still able to kick out. Oh, able to dodge that one. Spooky putting her whole body on the line. Maybe Spooky just a second too slow headbutt right to the temple of Monica. Oh, uh, dodges that hit. Oh my gosh, goodness gracious. Oh no. She has her, her ghostly hand deep in the jaw of Monica. What is she doing? One, two. Monica able to kick out. Oh my gosh, no resiliency either. Didn't have resiliency at that point. Uh, chop to the throat. She's got her up on the shoulders. What is she thinking here? Ooh. Spooky has somehow made a quick turnaround in this fight. Oh no, is she going for a choke slam this time? No, Monica gets out of it. But Spooky fires right back. Reckless abandon. These two women know what they're fighting for. A spot, a chance at going forward. And Sister Abigail by Spooky, the spookiest move of them all. And she's not done with Monica yet. Throws her into the barricade. She said false count anywhere. Ugh! <laughs> Look at all these targeted strikes. She continues to go over and over. Codebreaker! I spoke too soon. The Codebreaker, one, two, and Spooky's down for no, just two. The Ghost gets the arm up. We have a lot of dealings with the Ghost in the AWE. Oh, but Monica looks... Again to, oh goodness gracious, knee right to the back of the neck and she's going for another code breaker, isn't she? No, Spooky able to dodge it again. Goodness gracious. Monica just for the first time able to hit the code breaker and every time since, Spooky's been able to get out of it. Every time before as well, I know Monica's tried to hit that code breaker over and over again. Spooky's just had her number. Oh, but Monica doesn't have her number here. That time, 
Monica said, no, I refuse to let you reach down my throat. Spooky burns resiliency on Monica, and Monica realizing, okay, that's fine. Whatever it takes to get to Golden Ticket again, whatever it takes to get another opportunity, wails away with that steel chair and immediately goes into the pinfall saying, I beat you up enough, stay down, and she does. Monica with the first pinfall and into the senton that never hit, finally gets it hit, turns her around, and lifts Spooky up real slow like. Spooky maybe was not ready for this code breaker, was not ready for a hacker likes of Monica. Or maybe, maybe she is? No, Monica's still able to get a hold on Spooky, brings her right back into the middle of the ring. Spooky is in trouble. Monica going high fly in the, the high wrist district back of Spooky with that elbow drop. And Monica's just, boom, another senton. Monica's, I guess, the queen of sentons out here. I didn't know she had it in her like that. Kick to the back. Huh? Calls for her to get up, and she sits up like the Undertaker. Goodness gracious, but she got caught with all of that. My gosh, one, two, Monica goes on. Spooky's down. Two, even. What seemed like a dominant showing early on for Spooky turned into the end of the road as Monica snapped into it. After that code breaker, after that code breaker, and after I think the second time Spooky tried to reach her arm down Monica's throat, that's when Monica said, okay, no, I can't let that happen again. I gotta do whatever it takes to make sure that you stay down. And even Spooky sitting up like the Undertaker, she walked right into it. And Monica goes on officially sixth place. Congratulations to you, Monica. She's going on. Congratulations. I can't believe it. <laughs> Admittedly spooky. <laughs> yeah, I thought she had it. Did y'all think she had it? Because early on, it looked like it was all spooky. She was in move after move, but Monica just barely. And spooky was versing code breaker after code breaker. But at the end, Monica, she outwitted spooky. And that's all it took. Watch out, y'all. Back in. Let's go next up real quick. We are on to our next matchup. How are y'all doing? Give me a give me a count. I want to see you guys give me a count real quick. Huh? Hold on, I'm getting a call from from my man Dirk Madison. Here, let's talk. Let's talk to Dirk. I guess we can do a while this next. We don't want to waste too much time. We'll do a while this next match is going. Hello, when, when's hey, Dirk? Here? Give me one second. I, got uh, I don't. I don't think we have one cool. second. There's an All right. attack, Dirk. It's on you. What's up? There's an attack happening backstage right now. There's the the, the pimp man with that fancy hat. He's he's I'm being sorry? Atta yeah he's being attacked right now. He'll, he'll buy a man in a black mask and a but <laughs> and Ka Kazuichi is <laughs> yeah he's I'm recording. in this next match. Yeah, that's why I'm recording Are the you, whole thing. Do you you got okay. Yeah, I have the footage. You want me yeah, to send it your way? That would give me the um. I think that would be the best because then you can show yes, the people please. The, the, the footage. Can you hold on? Um, I, I can send it directly to your phone. Uh, I'll have to sorry, stop recording. I my phone. They're, they're almost done. They, oh, no. Oh, his poor knack on that concrete. Uh, I'll, I'll be sending it your way right now, okay? Here we go. Uh, Wednesday. Yeah, just send me that video when you're done. Oh. I'm, I'm sorry that that's happening. I'm sorry you had to experience that, to be honest. Yeah, I didn't expect to be a part yeah. of such a brawl back here. Okay, was, cool. Um, I kept my distance. I could have tussled, though. I could have knocked him out, but... Uh, uh, who's gonna let Ryoma know? <laughs> it's supposed to be a tornado tag uh, 2v2. That's gonna have to be on you, sir. I, or someone. He wanted... Oh. Okay, well, just keep eyes, keep eyes, keep tabs on everything that's going on. I Thank will you, appreciate do, you, and I'll report it. Okay, so... Um... Hmm. Uh... Dirk, Dirk has recorded some footage. Uh, and, and Kazuichi's gonna be... Gonna be out of this fight, huh? Uh, is what I understand. Uh, which means Ryoma might have to fight this one alone. Um, I couldn't get it on live, but I think... Yeah, since since this is pre-recorded, unfortunately, I'm live in the moment, but I'll add in Dirk's footage, I guess, uh, somewhere on the screen. You, you At this point, you've probably already seen it. 
I haven't even seen it. But I can only assume the worst if Kazuichi is unable to compete is all that I'm saying. These, okay, so this, the other side is what they call themselves. Kaito, like a coward, has decided to side with Nyes, and specifically Tokiko. He's not the only one, this Zero has also decided to side with Nyes, and lastly I believe Flair decided to side with Nyes, side with Tokiko. They want to uh, break the simulator, quote unquote. Ridiculous, but. Oh, man. And look at this, just sending Zero out there to hit Ryoma while he celebrates. Kaito, and like a dummy, exactly. Like a dummy, you got yourself out. Just like a dummy, yo, you missed that clothesline. Ridiculous. And look at that. They have no chemistry. They can't even work together to take him out. I hope Ryoma somehow, someway is able to get a handle on this situation because right now it don't look too good. And this Zero, it doesn't look like the Zero that we, we really know. Or rather that we knew. But at this juncture it looks like it doesn't matter. <laughs> Look at the- did you see the way that he crawled into that pinfall? He just laid Ryoma's face against the mat? The disrespect from Kaito that I've been seeing lately is just disgusting and despicable. Get him, Ryoma! Big, beautiful DDT. I'm gonna put on my, my unbiased commentary glasses. You know what? I don't think I see him. Oh, I do see him, unfortunately. <laughs> I, I wanted to be biased so bad because right now these two don't deserve admittedly unbiased commentary someone used to tell them that they're a couple of sons of a guns Ryoma doesn't deserve this Ryoma's our champion and I look if I were in that position I wouldn't even fight I'd be like you know what I'm done here I'll take the, the I'll, I'll take the forfeit but Kaito just <sighs> ruining poor Ryoma's life and now Ryoma has to deal with the numbers game and you know what, Ryoma has friends, he has a faction. But like, if they take out Kazuichi and Kaito clearly here, who used to be a part of Ryoma's faction, but I guess, I don't even know why he's doing this, maybe brimming with jealousy. If we walk through it, I guess Kaito lost his, um, it's almost the one year anniversary where he lost his title. And you know what? I'm not sure if we've seen him very often since then, if at all heavy shots. Maybe he's just been brimming with jealousy this whole time. Or maybe, hold on, Ryoma's out here, potentially going to get a good move in on Zero. Look at this turnaround, DDT! Hold on, now he's alone in that ring with Kaito. But Zero able, just blocked, didn't roll out of the ring, didn't get stunned. Tragic. And now they're both out there with Ryoma. Look at this. So disgusting. Despicable. And you know what's interesting because that's- I've, I feel like we've seen Zero do that taunt too. It's just disgusting. Hold on, wait a minute. Yeah, I guess that's right, there's no- I, There are- It feels like there's no DQ, but there's- there's countouts going on. Could- Could- Could we almost somehow win this by countout? I wouldn't think that there's any countouts or disqualifications, but maybe- Maybe there are! <laughs> Perhaps there are! <laughs> Hold on, reversal. What happens if one of you gets counted out? That's my question. If Ryoma's able to get one of them counted out? <laughs> that is that a W? I think that- I feel like that should be a W, you know? Face on to the apron. Crawled back into the ring. Now, does that restart the count is my other question. It sure does. Interesting. Well, I don't know what this referee is- and it's the stinking Nyes referee, too. That doofus son of a gun as they work together against Ryoma. Sickening. I'm sure they heard that they had a tag team match. I know Ryoma wanted this tag team match. He wanted a team with Kazuichi against the people who bought him into the Nye's dimension to attack him. Kaito beat him down. Ryoma couldn't get his focus because he was vastly outnumbered. But the reversal there, even still outnumbered, he's able to get these reversals, but turns around into Kaito, who whips him into the ropes. Wicked elbow strike. Stomps right to the chest. 
But Ryoma still all right, still okay. <gasps> Wait a minute, out of nowhere, Selena Del Sol! Long ways to go! But not even a one, and I, I have to believe the referee paused on that count. I have to believe the referee paused on that count. There's no shot he didn't pause on that count for so long. He was like, one! Well, he's pausing on that count too, so you know what? Fair play on both sides. Maybe he's just slow to count. Ryoma, wisely trying to take out zero on the outside. Maybe will. Hold on, look at this. Has him up in the heavens above. Ugh! Zero stun on the outside. And says shush, shush to Kazuichi. Uh, I'm sorry, not Kazuichi, Kaito. I'm still thinking about Kazuichi, wondering how bad this could have gotten. Turns Kaito around, has him deep in there. In an arm bar. But a reversal has been hit. And a running neck breaker. Kaito goes for the pinfall again. That's one, that's two. But that ain't the end of the match yet. Ryoma's still fighting, and I don't. <laughs> I, I, I want to ask, like, why are you still fighting Realm? I understand you're at the heart of a king, the heart of a champion, but the move theft and the disrespect by Kaito. Realma has to pop resiliency to his own finisher and a wicked strike by the Zero character. But Zero's starting to get the work from Kaito, I'm sorry, from Realma. Kaito unwisely in that corner. About to get whipped by Ryoma. Now Zero all alone in there. Oh, wasn't alone for too long. Kaito right back up to his feet. Hold on, Kaito tossing the corner. Hold on, Ryoma's the only one standing in the ring right now. Could could we see somehow, some way he pull off a miracle victory? He's still the only one standing. There's a chance. <laughs> There's hope. Wait a minute. He has no finisher, he has no signature, but ooh, after that neck breaker, one has to wonder. Ah, uh, Kaito, what could he be thinking? Ryoma tossed into the corner. Kaito lifting up the king. <gasps> Kaito! Oh, Ryoma getting out of the way. Kaito couldn't hit that finisher, but he paid for it. Ryoma paid for it. Getting called to stand up. What does Zero have planned? Double axe handle right to the top of the crown. The crowned king down, relentlessly assaulted. This is dreadful. Dreadful, horrible, despicable. I think despicable is the right word. I think easily despicable is the correct word in this situation. Kaito rolled inside of the ring. Ryoma trying to really fight this thing two on one and <laughs> admittedly doing one heck of a good job. Looking over there thinking, I don't know, maybe if I can I can get this idiot to lose by count out, but oh no. Oh gosh. Ryoma might be unfortunately the one to lose by count out now. But after that, walk in and walk out. It doesn't look like it. It looks like his torture will continue to ensue. Ryoma just starting to stir again. Oh, tossing zero into the post. Zero might be by uh, might be unconscious right now, might be knocked out, but still just stands right back up. What is this zero made of? DDT, hold on. Hold on a minute. There's a there's a chance for victory here. And look at that, reversing the combos there, but the numbers advantage again, not trying to make the most of the king. Still able to reverse. The king is the king for a reason. He's king of the ring. He's the royal crown for a reason. Come on. Come on, King Ryoma. The world's rooting for you to beat the odds. But it's a six count, and it looks like they're waiting. They're gonna say, we'll take a count out and embarrass the king. No. Zero says, no, let him get back in. He said, let him get back in. And that may have been his mistake. Is there hubris potentially going to... Uh, I was gonna say, is there hubris going to be their downfall... I'm not sure if it will be. Ryoma's gonna have to kick out of this one. One, two, and he does. The thing is, he does kick out. And look at that, a kick right to the groin. Hurricane Rana bopping the top of the head. And look at this. Ooh, he was thinking about that Salida del Sol, but got caught by a kick by Kaito. Kaito's got him up. And he's got him down. Ryoma struggling to survive. 
if this goes on for too much longer, Ryoma may sustain an injury. Big hits to Kaito. He just wants to hurt Kaito at this point, but Kaito tosses him into the corner. Knee right to the chest. But Ryoma again with the reversal kick and Kaito right back in the chest. Low drop kick misses. Zero misses that boot. And look at that beautiful move by Ryoma. Not the, not the long ways to go. But he takes out Zero. But Kaito was there waiting for him. Oh, but maybe Ryoma's got a plan. But that plan gets foiled very quickly by Kaito. Who has taken no real damage. It looks like Zero was the one who was supposed to just get in the way in this fight. And that code breaker was still... Oh, hold on. Maybe wasn't enough. Has him up, has him over. Takes him there. Sends Zero round and round flying. Goes to the pin. Wait a minute. One. Two. Now a kick out and no resiliency. The world was almost shocked. But look at this. Wait a minute. Kick right to the jaw. Kick to the face. The combos by Ryoma. Backing up. Uh, tossed into the referee. Kaito, he's kind of just standing out there. Oh, he's getting the steel chair. Oh, no. Targeting the arm. Into that pinfall. One, two. Ryoma still kicks out. Ryoma's been hurt a lot, but he ain't giving up. That's the last thing Ryoma wants to do. Heavy shots by Zero. Zero, the who know what at this point. The third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth. Look at this standing Spanish fly. Gets all of it. Was thinking about climbing to the top rope, but got hit from behind with essentially a Yosuke too. And a neck breaker by Kaito. Standing neck breaker. Lifts him up. Zero says, I want a piece of this too. Gives Ryoma the work. Oh my gosh, drops him on the crown of his head. Ryoma's in trouble. At this point in time, one has to wonder, Ryoma just needs to give up for the sake of his career, for the sake of making it to Ticket to Paradise. It is oh, fights like these that leave people with lasting injuries, ones that <laughs> last forever. We've seen brutal attacks like this take Sakura. Her knee never will be the same again. Hina, we already know her neck is a little bit wank from, from what's happened against her fights with Boss, but... Uh, hold on. That face buster. One has to wonder, is Ryoma going to suffer something of the same fate in this matchup? Or will he be able to overcome? Will he be able to survive? In this unexpected scenario, this two-on-one situation, Ryoma somehow still standing, but how much longer is that going to last? Looked around. Zero waiting for him to get up, realizing, ah, I could get him out. Has the knee locked in. And goodness gracious, hold on. Is that a submission? He's trying to break the legs? No, he tried it. It looked like he thought about breaking the legs. Ryoma climbing to the ropes thinking, I need to I need to do something. Kaito follows him, but Zero follows him too. Gets him there. Kaito climbs to the top rope. And takes him down as Zero lifted him up. Ryoma, I'm shocked, hasn't suffered an injury at this point. This is sickening. This is despicable. All because they didn't want a fair 2v2 match. Oh, hold on. Ran through him. But Kaito ran through Ryoma as well with that clothesline. And that may just be enough to put Ryoma away. He fought hard. And he's still fighting. Ryoma, at this point, uh, admittedly, I've seen a lot of fights in my time. But I think you might just need to give up. He still won't give up. That's the thing. He refuses to give up, and I respect that. I really do. I got a lot of respect for Ryoma. But that German suplex to the back of the neck, everything. And he just still rolls out saying, I can't get beat out here, and they both climb at the same time. Zero stays down saying, all right, Kaito, you're in charge. Oh, but maybe he shouldn't have been in charge because Kaito misses. And Zero with a ripcord clothesline turning Ryoma inside out. And that's what I was worried about. Ryoma starting to take damage. Starting to take injuries in this fight. But still has the wherewithal to taunt them. What is he getting out here? He's got a kendo stick. Oh, uh, but he's about to have a reversal. 
onto Zero, and a drop kick sending him into the table. But Kaito once again from behind. With that leg drop, Ryoma, he's struggling, he's hurting, and he's hurting bad. Still has a moment to celebrate. Kaito follows him. I, you know what? There's still a chance. Somehow, I suppose that if he wears them down as well, uh, you know, maybe he'll win by countout. That's the ugh. That's the one thing I can I, I can think of. They had they almost had mercy earlier. They almost let Ryoma lose by countout, but Zero walked out and walked back in, saying, "No, nope, that's not how it's gonna be." I I think we all thought for a second as right now. Zero feeds Kaito Ryoma. Ooh. Because here it is. One, two. No, Ryoma, please. Ryoma, every shot that they hit you with, uh, you, you, you're still countering, and I appreciate you and I respect you, but you, you gotta. You, you might have to give up at some point, my dude. Kaito rolls to the outside, and that neck breaker might be enough. Every move at this point might be enough. With an injured Ryoma, everything could be enough. Oh, reversal. Actually, reverse Zero's finisher. Oh, Kaito, no. Put those down. Kaito, no, 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 no. Kaito, there's, there's no... There's really no need for you to do that. He's backing up. He's hitting it. Long ways to go. Into the pinfall. Oh, referee one. Wait! <gasps> Zero pops resiliency. Zero pops resiliency. And another Selena Del Sol! Zero's right there waiting. Here's the thing. If a move gets hit right now, a big move on Zero, Ryoma might somehow clutch this. Instead, he wants Kaito. Kaito still has resiliency, but he wants Kaito. And another Selena Del Sol. A long ways to go. Zero standing up. Knocks a Ryoma senseless, but wait a minute, a reversal there as well by Ryoma. Up on the ropes, but Zero gets out of the way. Alright, you know what? You, if you want to fight, you can fight. <laughs> oh, but look at this, a deep arm bar. Ryoma refusing to give up though. And Kaito turns him around and just stomps him. Kaito incensed, saying, you think you can make fools of us? We will send you to the other side. Calls for Ryoma to get up. And another clubbing splash. No, gets out of the way. Dropkick to Kaito's face. Dropkick right to Kaito's face. I think Ryoma knows his path to victory is trying to beat Zero. Trying to keep them both down. He had a moment. <laughs> he had one moment. If he can build up. Another onslaught of moves like he just did. There is a chance. There is a a snowball's chance in hell, but still a chance that he somehow, someway wins this fight. Ryoma using that bar. Realizing, I don't know if I'm going to be able to hit my signature. I just need to hit them. <laughs> That's all I need to do. Deep arm drag by Ryoma. Kaito stands right back up. Tossed in the middle of the ring, thinking, hey, maybe I can get this zero guy. I gotta get back in the ring is the uh, the important part, unfortunately. Uh, pullback attack. And Ryoma might be in trouble. Stomped on his face. Lifted up. <gasps> reversal by Ryoma. Uh, here's the thing. If he gets one reversal here, but it doesn't look like it. He's up and he's down on the top of the knee. Zero may be looking to eliminate the Kang. Oh, onto the top of the head again. The head that they had just injured. Their targeted attacks. This has to stop. That has to be it. That has to be it. One. <gasps> Y'all, no shot. <laughs> Y'all, there's no shot. Reversal of a finisher. By Ryoma. He's the king for a reason. Dropped onto the ropes though. Kaito may have him right where he wants him. Center of the ring. Lifts him up. Says shush. And he sends him to the other side. Into the pinfall. 
Ladies and gentlemen, Ryoma, it's been real. You fought like the Dickens. We all believed that you had a real chance at the end of that one, but lo and behold, something's got to be done about the other side. Ryoma, a goat, a performance of a lifetime, 2v1, almost took them down, burned resiliency on one of them. This has to stop. This numbers advantage has to stop. They injured the champion. This has this has to stop. We'll talk about what we do about this later. I'm gonna try and send Dirk a text message to see if he can get to Ryoma. Ryoma's gotta get to the. Oh, goodness gracious! Give me the fingerprint. There we go. Uh, but also watch how Tommy back in here. What? We do have more show to get through. Oh, uh, let me see. Dirk. Check in on Ryoma. Make sure he gets to medical. Talk to him about Kaito and the other side. I'm sure he's got a lot on his mind right now, and I don't want to—I <laughs> don't want to interrupt him too much. But we got a big championship match on our hands right now, and I need to make sure the title's on the line because sometimes the game likes to take it off of the line, <laughs> like it just did. <laughs> Here we go. Kana will be defending that championship. It's an open challenge. Whoever wants to answer it can answer it. Let's see who does answer it. Whew. Kana. Best of luck to you, and best of luck to whoever decides to answer the call from Akana. Admittedly. Who will it be? Well, I think it's about time we find out. Watch out, Charleston. What the? It is. Alright, Mike Rome. You're about to be fired in 2K24. <laughs> Table's title on the line. Who is... It's Samugi. <laughs> Coming out to Queen's <laughs> entrance? You know, at this juncture, I'm not sure what she's doing right now. She's done this once before. But she did it, I feel like, before as a taunt to Arrow. But at this point in time, it looks like she might actually be... Really taunting Queen. Using her pyro, using her entrance? Is it possible that Samugi might have a problem with Queen? I have no idea, but I guess we're about to find out. Samugi uh, is answering Kana's open challenge. I was going to say, this has nothing to do with Queen. I don't know what to tell you. Regardless, I maybe I don't think it's mind games for Kana either. Kana, I feel like I could care less about Queen, especially if Kana's not gonna have to fight Queen. But here she is, your tables champion. She's so excited! Boom, 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 and the bucket head goes boom. Let's go, Kana. Showed the world what it means to be a champion. Survive the Tables Gauntlet, beat Miss Now, whose name is synonymous with the Tables Championship. Beat Miss Reiko, beat Sharpshooting Steel Minded Big Sister Sarah, beat all of her big sisters, and she proved to be the one. She started off that gauntlet, and look who's still holding that title. She made a name for herself in one night in the AWE. But I'll tell you what, she's got tough competition ahead of her. It is Kana Samugi. 1v1 Tables Championship. Big chop starting off by Miss Kana. Kana, <clears throat> once again, we've already talked about this. Made a name for herself. We gotta talk about the past, though. The past. I'm sure Kana 
is almost happy to give Samugi this opportunity. Samugi is a part of the group. That will take down Void. And keep in mind, Kana was one of the converged. Kana does know what it feels like to be converged. So seeing Void gone for good, I'm sure Kana was happy. I'm sure Kana felt like a weight lifted off of her chest, off of her shoulders. But I'll tell you what. <laughs> she's <laughs> she might be thankful to Samugi, but she's not gonna she's not gonna go easy on her. Kana, as we see right now, Samugi's not really, really been able to get a hit on her. Uh oh. Maybe I spoke a second too soon because throws like that <laughs> are what caused Tables Championships to change hands. Ah, uh, toss in the corner. And on to the barricade. It looks like, oh goodness gracious, Samugi with that balance <laughs> was trying to hold herself up, trying to get herself down. But Kana with a knee is that let me help you down. Toss into the chairs. Oh my gosh, her knee. Her knee colliding with that chair, her face with the apron. This. I don't know, it feels like it's gonna be a match. Oh, again, poor Samugi. Kana using the environment to her advantage, and I think that's important because she's small. She is small, but she is smart. <laughs> to say the least, she's small but smart. When you got the advantage, the, the advantage of the environment, you use it. Use the tables, use the aprons, use everything. Oh, uh, but I'll tell you what she's using right now. Her mind, she's saying, all right, let me, let me get a couple tables. Climb back in this ring real quick. And she's out here celebrating, but Samugi's out here getting the table instead. Rolls it into the ring. Kana looks like she's going to follow suit and get a table in the ring as well. Uh, Samugi almost dove right outside is the real thing. <laughs> Imagine she dove right into a reversal into that table. It would have been one fall already. Big, oh, Kana tried to use her own strength, but maybe Samugi was just a little bit too heavy for her, fell victim then to a leg drop. But keep in mind, Kana really hasn't taken all too much damage since then. Oh, what is this? Stomp to the back of the neck. Huh? Samugi's got that table. Hits Kana with it, and then tosses it inside the ring, realizing, all right, yeah, 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 I'm going to put this up. She's gonna get in here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna be the one to put you through a table, easy peasy. Samugi may have may have just may have just been like, you know what? I don't need to hurt you. I just need to put you through a table twice, <laughs> which is gonna hurt. So I guess you gotta hurt her. <laughs> Ooh, kind of with a reversal and a neck breaker back of Samugi's neck, landing around that table. Samugi tried to get a possum kick in, but kind of just too quick for him. Kind of just too quick. Huh? Samugi often forgotten about in the AWE. <laughs> I was going to say often forgotten about in the AWE until she turned that one around. But Kana's now getting face to table and the corner table is the first one that's set up. Here's the thing, will anyone be able to use it very quickly? Oh my gosh, not onto the table! That's nasty, why are you going to do that? That's, 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 that's just not, that's not okay, that's not right. Samugi setting up that table. Kind of gets right back in the ring. I don't think... Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, I don't think that table is going to be set up for long. And Samugi, <laughs> her consciousness might, might not be set up for long either. Steps right back in, but may have stepped right into Kana's trap. <gasps> Samugi with a reversal. Tossed the wrong way. And Kana realizing that was almost one step closer to me losing my table's championship. Rolls into the ring. Table still standing. They were like pixels away from knocking it down. Oh, if Samugi lifted her up for a suplex, it would have been curtains for the first fall. But instead, rocking Kana with a combo. Ooh, misses a slap. And that may prove to be her downfall. Or maybe it's Kana's downfall. Tried to drag her to the table. Kana just too quick again. Just too quick again. Table's title on the line. Oh, power bomb. Every lifting move when they're around that table, you're on the edge of your seat, you're like, oh, that could be it. Like that, close. Like that, if there were any rotation, Sumugi would have been down one fall. Oh, but what's kind of out playing here? Is this going to be an actual power bomb? She's walking over to the table. Good night, Sumugi. One fall to the table's champion, Miss Kana.
kind of realizing, yeah, let me get another table real quick. I don't like that corner table all that much. And just like that, another table is introduced into the spray. So Mugi now has a long road ahead of her if she wants tables gold. Or tables wood, <laughs> I suppose. But it's kind of half planned here. Oh, well, uh, whatever she's got planned, it was foiled. Kind of tossed it into the ropes. Big shots by Samugi. Rocking poor Kana. And you know what's wild? She had a finisher, she had a signature, decided not to use what we know that she has. She has that vicious muscle buster. A move that'll ruin pretty much every <laughs> every ounce of your strength. Trying to drag Kana to a table. Oh, but the other table in the way. She has no room to rotate. Oh, but kind of missing that slap is not going to prove to be... Wait, that might be the end of the match. It is! She did it to the corner table! Kana just taking out Samugi with ease! Kana says, thank you, next! And might be adding directly to Ticket to Paradise with that Tables Championship Kana. Incredible work. Um... Y'all, where we at? Okay, there we are. I was so confused! The Tables Champion reigns on. That's Kana. <laughs> we used to say that now was synonymous with that Tables Championship. We might have to talk about Kana in the very, very near future as an all-timer Tables Championship. When we get to our year-end awards for the AWE, we might have to talk about Kana and her run as Tables Champion. Who knows how long it's going to last? <laughs> I hope it's forever. Kana. Thank you. Thank you very much. Watch out, tell me back on, please. And thank you. All right, you guys. This show is on the road. <laughs> this show is on the road. Let me hear your numbers in chat. What are your predictions looking like as we're starting to eat, uh, enter the final stage of tonight? Kana handles Samugi with relative ease. I thought that they'd be going for a little bit longer, but now. <laughs> no, now here's the thing. Um, I suppose I'm a little bit worried about this match. <laughs> It is, um, the one and only Makoto Naigi. You know, he's been, uh, he's been very good at, at, at going face-to-face -face with, um, <laughs> with vicious threats. That being said, um, Glitched isn't necessarily a threat, Watata. Watata! But he is a menace, and Makoto wants to see, uh, <laughs> I guess what his power level is. <laughs> He exploit, uh, exposed rather the repairman, but now here he is, Makoto Naegi. Good luck to you, uh, because you're going one on one with the glitch. Marco, Tom, Maggie, my guy, <laughs> Makoto. I don't know what possessed you to do this, but. I'll be real, I can't say it, I don't support you in your endeavors. You said you wanted Glitch 1v1? Last man standing? I said go for it. He said I don't have to get pinned, I don't have to tap out, all I gotta do is stand up again. And hey, I'm a lucky guy. How lucky is he gonna be? We're gonna find out very soon. Okay, he's lucky enough to, to, to twerk for, 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 for hundreds of people. <laughs> Good on you, good on you, my guy. <laughs> Gosh darn it, Makoto. What's wrong with you? <laughs> I get your feeling though, you're feeling the vibes. What's wrong with you? Oh, here we go. A confirmed competitor for golden tickets. Will be in that chamber match. And very well could walk out with the, the golden ticket. We'll see. Yo, these strawberry shake m and Hey, there's Glitch. He's a problem. He's not a world ending problem. So I don't mind. That's how I got a contract. Look. <clears throat> I can be threatened. <laughs> if it's for the good of the company, yeah, you can fight it. That's fine. That's all I can really say. He's here. He's strong. But you know what? Sooner or later, everybody falls. 
We saw Pies fall to Steve Harvey. Maybe Glitch will fall to Makoto. It's true. Go ahead and do your sitting down. Put your cheeks in that chair and turn out your light. It's fine. I'm gonna enjoy these because they're delicious. Probably should have some water with me. <laughs> but I digress. Here comes Glitched again. A fiend. Yeah. Disgusting. I don't know if I'd go that far. He's, he's beefy. That, that, that's a strong entity. That being said, Makoto does surprisingly well against entities. <laughs> so let's see how he does against the glitch. Will Makoto expose another? Well, you know what? I was going to say he dodged the first move. Then he got dodged himself. Hold on. Wait a minute. Wait. Hold on a second. <laughs> All right. You know what? I'm going to let Makoto cook. <laughs> Because, you know, I expected it to be immediately one-sided, but you know what? Let Makoto cook. That's all we have to keep saying. You let people cook in the AWE. We have to let... We let Steve Harvey cook. Look how far he got. We let Kana cook. Look how far she got. Getting cooked. You gotta let people cook. Oh, Makoto tried to use a possum kick, but it didn't work out in his favor. Although he is. Diving off the ropes. Does get that drop kick in, and maybe... The possum kick on the other side did work. Glitched. Walking around, looking around, saying, all right. Last man standing, that means there's no DQ. I'm going to ruin that man. So, Makoto was kind of waiting for him, saying, all right. You want to use those stairs? You got to push them in the ring first, and then you won't have them in your hand. Makoto wisely waiting for Glitch, but Glitch just pushes him down and then gets the steel stairs again. Makoto not letting him have them. Glitch may have hit the top of his head on those steel steps. And Makoto again from the middle rope. The dropkick picture perfect. And Makoto, surprisingly enough, has a finisher on the ready. Could we see the downfall of Glitch to the luckiest boy of all time? It's possible. <laughs> and as much as I hate to admit it. Now there's a shot, <laughs> but it's not going to be an easy fight. Makoto already with the yellow in the head glitched, not close in that regard. Wicked kick nearly decapitating Naegi. And glitch says, go ahead and count. Jessica already did a two count. Three. Four. Makoto struggling a little bit. Got up to his feet at four. That kick nearly knocked his lights out, but he was like, you know what? Ugh! That knee might have knocked his lights out. Glitch saying, yep. I'm a count. Make a count after every single strike is what Glitch is saying. I'm going to systematically destroy Makoto Naegi. But he's up again. He says, get down again. Turns him around. Stomps on his back. And has him in the accolade submission hold. Makoto burns resiliency. Not entirely sure that was the wisest idea, but look at that neck breaker. Maybe I spoke too soon. Perhaps I spoke too soon. Makoto on the top rope. Glitch ready there for him, but Makoto actually gets the move off. Glitch suffering some damage. Picture perfect drop kick misses this time. Not quite picture perfect, but Makoto with the reversal. A chop to the chest. Uh, hold on. DDT to glitch. Makoto starting to cook in this matchup. Backs up. Deep Hurricane Rana. Maybe even a Frankensteiner. Glitch is, shockingly enough, <laughs> stunned. Three. He's, he teabags him. <laughs> Wait a minute. Is he going to be down for more than four? Five. Hold on a second. Six. I was gonna say there's no shot. And Makoto taking a little too long to celebrate as Glitch gets up to his feet. Imagine. Imagine if that were enough to take out Glitch for a count of ten. Not even close. And now Makoto is suffering the same fate. 
three, four, Makoto, five, just struggling, six, already a seven. Oh, Makoto, eight, he's up. He is up. One has to think, luckily, he's up. Lift it up, and he's gonna get dropped. Not onto the ropes, to the outside. Just throws him outside of the ring. Almost chucked him at those steel steps, and just watches, saying, all right, I dare you to get up again. Look at him, kind of walking around restlessly. Saying, do I want to destroy him? Do I want to murder him? No, I can't kill. No killing right now. Sickening. Makoto at a 7 count after getting deposited outside the ring. 8 count. 9. Makoto up at 9. That was almost the end of the match. And Glitch immediately goes right back after him. Looking for what looks like a power bomb. No reversal by Makoto. Has a handle on Glitch. Gets him by the knee. And has another finisher on lock. Lifts him up saying, I might need to use it immediately. Big slop. Oh, big slop. Big slap. Glitch is not down, so he's going to have to do a little bit more work. And Makoto gets caught with a big boot. And now the struggle continues. That's one. Two. Three. Four. Every move by Glitch, it hurts. And it hurts bad. A powerful striker, grappler. In all regards, he is an all-arounder. He is a beast. One to be reckoned with. And will one single big boot really be enough to take down Makoto Naegi, who's at eight. He stands back up. But was that a wise decision? Hold on. Tosses Glitch back into the ring. Gets the steel steps for himself. Realizing I might need a weapon at this point. Oh, but Glitch tosses Makoto back into the ring. And Jessica just starts counting. <laughs> uh, I'm, you know, I'm going to say I'm pretty sure Makoto's not going to be down for, for this one for 10. If, if he just gets thrown into the ring and it was 10, I think I would laugh. I'd be like, Makoto, what's wrong with you? <laughs> you know, he moved his leg. Or maybe he's taking a nap. He's back up at 8. Oh, he rolls out of the ring. That was incredibly wise. I'm not going to lie. Uh, hold on. Uh, but it might not be wise anymore because with that night, night kick, lights out, Makoto's down again. It's getting hard to watch, but Makoto, if there's one thing he's got, he's got hope. Out of four, actually. Hold on, look at this. Wait a minute. Kipped up into a comeback and turned around, rolled up, kicked to the head, the audience on their feet, <laughs> and so is Makoto. Walks slowly towards Glitch, but Glitch with that reversal, Makoto reversing right back, and he hits that move again, Glitch down, Glitch down! One... Two... That flurry, all he needs is a flurries like that, and it could be... Enough to somehow keep the Glitch down for a count of ten. Oh, but it's just six. Lifts him up again. Makoto, you got more work to do. Trying to get the combos on Glitch. Gets a full combo off. Backs up. Running forearm. Twisting forearm. Hold on. Lifts him back up again saying that's not going to be enough. Tosses Glitch into the ropes. Outside of the ring, actually, and he's stunned. Glitch actually stunned, and Makoto keeping on him. Makoto wisely enough keeping on him. DDT on the outside saying, I gotta get him as much damage as I can. But he's not stunned anymore. And he reverses right afterwards. Makoto might be back in danger. Keeping him down, ground pound. And now Makoto back up. Tossed into the ring. Right where Glitch wants to end this. Stomps him. And says, it's time to lock in the accolade. Makoto forced to tap out. Forced to tap out, but Glitch won't let go. Makoto's hurt. He's hurt and he's hurt bad. Trying to tap out as soon as he can to just 
not pass out, but it might be too late. He might have passed out. After that accolade, he's down for five. Makoto. It's been real. Jessica, you can even see, took a step. Was worried. Wait a minute, Makoto actually up at eight. But Glitch sends him right back down. And is he going to stay there is the real question. Makoto has had hope every so often in this fight. Popping back up at 8, 9, 7, over and over again. The hits from Glitched. The submissions locked in deep. His back in immense pain. He's barely got breath in his lungs. But somehow, some way, will he be able to get up again at 8, maybe? He is. Oh, but he's going to punch him right in the heart. Makoto suffered a punch right to the heart. That might be it from him. From that kind of strength. Might be enough to make your heart skip a beat. If not, stop it completely. We're at a five count of Makoto. Might not be getting up for a while. We might need to send a stretcher in to help him back up to his feet. Because Makoto is up. He used the ropes to get right back up. Glitch busy celebrating. Thinking he had won the match, maybe his hubris was too much. Makoto realizing this thing. I guess I got a chance. And I've got to use it. Hits a combo. And a neck breaker on the glitched. Bodies both red. Head and body of both competitors red. Makoto putting up a fight against glitched. Doesn't even let the count go, says one count. No, 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 no. I need some more. He goes up and over, but Glitch catches him and power bombs him, reverses that finisher, and Glitch says, Count. Wants to embarrass Makoto, says, One of my regular moves is gonna finish you. And I'm going to savor it. And that's exactly what's happening. Not this time, though. He turns him around saying, All right. Tap out again, and he has to. And he has to. That's where we are at this point. He has to tap out again. That's the second, third, second or third time he's locked in that accolade. Third time, I think. First time he had to get out with resiliency at that time. What can he do? Makoto, it's been real, but like... Much like Ryoma earlier, you just need to learn when to stay down, and, and this might be your time to stay down, Makoto. His back, his, 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 his chest. I don't think he has air in his lungs. I don't even know if he's conscious right now. He's up at nine. And he reverses glitched. He has him in an arm bar. <laughs> Makoto, I was going to say his arms aren't hurting the slightest, so I don't know if that's going to work out in your favor. Not in the slightest, because look at that. A knee right to the head. Makoto up to one foot. Gets caught. Full-fledged hit. Now here's the thing. Glitch still has that finisher. If he decides to use it, Makoto's going to be out like a light. That's all that I can say. For the luckiest boy. Maybe down for the count for real this time. He got lucky to get up at 9 last time. When we say he got lucky to get up at 9, <laughs> that's true. He's up at 8. What is Glitch at this point? The entire time we've been asking, what is Makoto going to need to do to keep Glitch down? Maybe we'll need to ask at some point, what is Glitch going to need to do to keep Makoto down? Glitch can't rely on the submission maneuver that he just had. He's got to put Makoto down for a count of 10. And this is a man who has tons of heart. Now that heart punch... I thought was going to be enough to take out the heart. Oh, but look at that. He actually reversed the finisher that time. A little payback as Makoto hits a double knee ripcord. Lifts Glitch right back up saying, all right, nope, I know what I need to do. Turns him around, but he gets reversed again into a power bomb. Turnabout's fair play. Glitched down, or rather Makoto down from Glitched. 
already at a two count. Makoto is lucky he's not stunned. That's been a saving grace this entire time. He just hasn't been stunned. But with every... Every new move, every big move hitting Makoto, keeping him down for a little bit longer, hurting his back a little bit more. He's up at 8 again. Glitch actually goes outside of the ring. Thinking about the steel steps again, the other set, but Makoto says, I'm not going to give you a chance to do that. Makoto surviving in this match. Taking Glitch down, face onto the mat. Here's the thing, Makoto's strategy has been, if I get some moves off, uh, I can't let him, <laughs> I simply just cannot let him recover. I gotta keep him down, I gotta keep him down for good. Look at that, he's trying to stun Glitch. Makoto playing this match, at least, uh, I gotta say, wisely. Still goes right, yeah, I was gonna say he could've let him count there, but I think Makoto knew that that wasn't gonna be enough. Runs up, this time, hits that... The forearm, he's got two finishers, but Glitch just keeps reversing them. There's a chance that Makoto wins this fight, climbs to the top rope. Is he still gonna... Oh my gosh, did you see the turn? On that frog splash! Makoto going up again, realizing, I still need to do more. Tried to go for a coup de grace, hits the knee it looked like of Glitch. <laughs> Makoto saying no <laughs> I gotta <laughs> I gotta do more and I think he knows he's right oh but the heart punch and glitch sick and tired of these games lifts Makoto up takes him to the ropes and tosses him outside he's stunned and he says stay down no doesn't even keep him stunned says Sister Abigail on the outside, too. That combination of moves. As much as I want to say, Makoto, <laughs> you fought a good fight, and you did. You fought an incredible fight. But signature after finisher on the outside? I don't know if there's a chance on this planet that you make it out of this. Ladies and gentlemen... He's done it. Glitch takes the win, but you know what? He had to work for it. And what we thought would be Makoto potentially getting steamrolled? Glitch had to work for the victory. Glitch had to work for it. And that, that is all we needed to see. Makoto... He's struggling over there, but you know what? He's breathing, and he's still standing. That being said, Glitch is going to be a difficult entity to stop at Ticket to Paradise. Goodness me. Well, what can I say? Makoto, you put up a good fight. In fact, you did very well in that match. You got a way, way more often than I thought you were. Makoto, that's my, you know what, Makoto, you might be, you might be in that last chance, um, battle royale too. Makoto, you might, you might be in there, you might be in there, my guy. I think, what, what if the first two in that, uh, that chamber were glitched, and Makoto, imagine. What a time. What a time that would be, but that being said, we only got a couple more matches left on the card, and you guys know what they are. It is, Racket of Psalm versus Hina and Sakura, well rather one combination of Racket of Psalm and of course our tag team championship match Eggman and Atori a pair of Docs versus Coldest Day two big tag team matches we're starting off with Hina and Sakura versus a combination of Racket of Psalm just who do you think it's gonna be is the real question let me know in the live chat. Make your picks in the poll. I'll be here, ready, watching, in enjoying, savoring, in fact. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> here we go. We'll watch out on. It's been a good show. Let's see how this one plays out. 
Imagine <laughs> when they said some, uh, <laughs> some combination of racket of psalm. <laughs> Just all three of them <laughs> got into the ring saying, oh, go fight all of us. That would suck. Sakura here. Sakura admittedly not too happy. Not too happy about Hina losing by countout last time. Wants to help her get a little bit of revenge. And so they said, hey, tag team match. Keeping these competitors in action. We'll see. Sakura, good luck to you. Um, teaming up with the champion. Now here's the thing. I, <laughs> I know Sakura enjoys the champion. Loves Hina. They have gotten over their grievances. They've had a rocky relationship. They were had their ups and downs, but I think they're back at the top. They're good buddies yet again. That being said, I'm pretty sure that <laughs> Sakura still wants that title. Sakura admittedly still wants that title. We'll see if she's able to get it eventually. But a ticket to paradise, it will be this woman versus Tamara. And that woman is the alpha of the AWE. She's been at the top of the mountain since Ticket to Paradise. She's been at the top of the mountain before. It's Hina. Repaired eye and all walks into this fight knowing she gets to go toe to toe with her opponent at Ticket to Paradise. She needs to gather all the information she can against her opponent at Ticket to Paradise. She needs to see just what Tamara's made of. Because I'll tell you what she's not made of. She's not <laughs> invincible. <laughs> she is here because she just came back from injury. Hina, and I think knows that Hina, Hina kind of knows that she's on top because of Tamara. She got to replace her Got the pinfalls, the additional pinfall, and, and that was enough. Now, here's the thing. I think Hina knows deep inside of herself that it's Ticket to Paradise. It's not just that Tamara needs to prove herself. It's that Hina needs to prove herself. This is this last obstacle that Hina needs so she can really truly call herself one of the greatest of all time. She can truly call herself the champion. Because until she beats Tamara, there will always be that asterisk. 1v1 at Ticket to Paradise, it will be Tamara versus Champion Hina. But coming out right now. It is Racket of Psalm, and they are all here, your tag team champions. And Tamara at Ticket to Paradise. They could all be holding gold, or none of them could be. That, that's the real question. Tamara's happy to be back with her girls, and I'm sure her girls are happy to have her back. The real question is, what combination of these three will be fighting tonight? Will we see the tag team champions? Will we see... Oh, oh well, look at that. I think we have our answer, actually. Racket of Psalm with Marin? That implies, I think, that Tamara and Panette are going to go at it. I'm excited to find out. Now, Panette... More eyes have been on her recently. We love the coolest kick in town. We love Tamara. But Panette's been kind of a wild card. And in their recent AWE title defense, tag team title defense rather, they went up against Sakura, who was here today, as well as Ribbon, Arrow. And Arrow seemed to have been knocked a little bit silly after a move by Panette. And here they all are today. Look at that. What a fantastic... You know what? <laughs> you gotta admit, Racket of Psalm, they know how to have a party. They know how to have fun. Love them or hate them, they know how to get the job done. Whether it's by pinfall, submission, or countout, they'll do it any way they can. You know what? At least they've never done it by disqualification. That's something we don't see a lot of in this game. A win by DQ. I would love for the AI to try and pull that sometimes. <laughs> But it's just not smart enough to do that. Like, if you're, like, a real heel, you're down on your luck, you got a lucky kick out, you just pull out a steel chair, disqualified. I'd love to see, like, a rare chance of that happening. I'm sure it might be, like, a cutscene. I don't want that. <laughs> okay, yeah, it is. It's Panette and Tamara. It is Sakura and Hina. And this action begins right now. Jessica, our referee. Big suplex, side suplex. And look at that. Sakura goes after Tamara. And knocks her out quick. 
And a big kick onto Panette. And Sakura says, you know, <laughs> here you go. Big slap to Panette. Big hits. And look at this. Boom. Shot to the back. Sakura back in these quick tags. Quick tags are you win quick tag team matches. And a wicked kick by Sakura. Oh, man. Panette. And you know what? There's a little bit of, I guess, rivalry here. Because when you think about it, Sakura married to Arrow. Right? Panette, the one who literally knocked Arrow out. At this juncture, I'm sure Sakura is thinking... <laughs> I'm looking to knock you out too. Not on the ropes, but not able to reverse. But Sakura reversing right back. Whips the arm, nearly tries to break the arm, and a kick right to the back. Panette in trouble immediately. One kick out. Kick out just like that. Panette's not been able to get really any offense on. And now Hina's back in the ring. Panette might have to. Still not tagging out though. And just watch that happen, Panette. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Goes for another pinfall. One, just a one count. Tamara in there saying, all right, you got it, you got it. But I was going to say, Panette really has not done anything in this fight. She's just been absorbing the damage. Unless she's trying to wear the other competitors out. Maybe like, <laughs> look at their stamina and say, oh, you, you're tired now. Now Tamara's going to get you. But they have been working flawlessly as a team, these two. And look at this. A submission hold by Hina not let him in. Uh, but I'll tell you what, Panette in trouble. Tamara, <laughs> Tamara and Hina going at it now. Tossed outside of the ring. Goodness gracious. And Hina said, that's why I'm at the top of this division. That's why I am the alpha. And a tag made in to Sakura. Who takes down poor Panette. <laughs> oh, but a roll up. Hook in the bag knee. Hold on. One, just a one count. Sakura, I think, gets PTSD. That's happened to her before. Someone hooking the bad knee on a roll-up, and it was able to get her out early in a matchup. In fact, it was one of those things that, <laughs> honestly, nearly, it pretty much ruined her chances at boss. Oh, but look at this. Big shot to the knee. Another wicked kick. Open hand strike. I'm surprised, admittedly, Panette's not out cold after that. Able to kick out, no resiliency. Oh, uh, but Panette's been taking a lot of hits. And another roll-up, not hooking the bad leg, though. That's barely going to be one. I knew it for a fact. And I think their plan is just keeping Tamara isolated from Panette. Oh, man, did you see that? Panette went right after the bad knee. Right after the bad knee, and now Panette's starting to get fired up. <clears throat> Look at that. Trying to wring the neck of Sakura. Bounces her head against the mat. And Tamara finally gets tagged in. Tamara looking over at Sakura. Sakura ready for the reversal. And she's got Tamara up. But Tamara wisely able to get over top. And goes after the bad knee as well. And it looks like these two have a target. Sakura missing wildly, maybe because that bad knee starting to affect her. Stop to the back of the elbow. And a quick tag. Now, I mean, I'm not going to say it's a quick tag, because <laughs> Panette's been taking a whole lot of damage. But tossed over. Once again, the bad knee. And the submission hold that she loves to do so much. Sakura immediately in trouble. And look at the... And that's what we were talking about before, the knees. The knees are in trouble. And maybe that was their plan, saying, let's isolate one body part. And the body part that got isolated by Sakura were the legs, the bad legs. And that's going to be the story of this matchup. If Sakura has to, uh-oh, has to go down because of that leg, because of that knee, because both competitors see that knee. If they weaken those legs, those kicks from Sakura are going to hurt a little bit less. Going to be a little less devastating, but right now, Hina's still completely fresh. Huh? But I'm not sure if they care about that. I think they care about taking out Sakura. That's their path to victory at this point.
which is a a hefty uh, a tall order to be honest. <laughs> oh, look at that! Oh my gosh, what is this? Has her in an arm bar? That's crazy. <laughs> I don't know how she did that either. All right, uh, well, she didn't. She still couldn't kick out of it. There we go. Goodness gracious! It looked like she broke her back trying to get into that. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh no. Tamara. I don't think that strategy is working out for you because that's a two count and resiliency is already burned. The pain. The absolute pain of that kick, but Tamara still focused up, still going strong, and on the outside. Panette's being taken care of, but look at this. Jumps up to the top rope saying, I still got some fight left in me, turns around, goes out, drop kick, missile drop kick right to the chest of Sakura. And a move step sister Abigail out of nowhere onto the champion, a statement made. Hina caught a stray! A stray move theft! <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> Y'all, I don't think I've ever seen that before! Outside of the ring, your partner catches a stray move theft? That's crazy! <laughs> That's insane! Oh, uh, look at that. Tamara trying to make that hot tag to Panette. Sakura got, tried to get in the way. Didn't quite get there. Oh, Panette tried to use that. She tried to use that move that knocked out Arrow, and uh, Sakura was not having it. Sakura not having it at all. And the tag's been made to Hina, who was, I was gonna say, completely fresh in this one, but did take a Sister Abigail literally out of nowhere. Oh, hold on a minute. Tossed over, went under, went over again. Hina ran through her. Missed that clothesline though. And Panette ripcord knee, rocking the jaw of Asahina. And now we're about to see champion versus challenger tagged in right now. It's Tamara, it's Hina, and it is live in the middle of this ring. Ducks that clothesline, turns her around, kicks her in the gut. Are we about to see already sandstorm kick? And things are starting to look towards the way of Racket of Psalm. Has her lifted up. Now here's the thing. Hina has technically taken two finishers already. <laughs> One of her own, which is hilarious. Out of nowhere caught a stray <laughs> Sister Abigail, which I don't think I've ever seen before. <laughs> Man, Tamara was ready for it and is still ready for the champion. Leaves her there with a kick and then goes to tag in Panette. And it's like the tag match we saw earlier. The longer this goes on, the more it starts to even out. And the brawler that we see in Panette sometimes has been awakened. As she rains heavy fist after heavy fist on the champion. Oh, look at this. She's going to send her to Sakura. And it works. The tag's been made. What do these guys have in store for Tamara, the challenger? Big body drop. And Sakura's outside of the ring, surprisingly enough. Well, I guess so is Tamara. I think Panel was thinking, all right, you know, you know. <laughs> Distracted for a little bit. She's like, hey, look at me, look at me. Oh, she's going to drop her on the ropes. Sickening thud against the ropes, Panette in there immediately. And Hina following her, saying, all right, you know what, okay, I got three. Ooh, hold on, fired back into a drop kick. Didn't see Tamara behind her, couldn't see her. Eyes on the wrong competitor. And a stomp to the chest, stomp to the abs of Sakura. Going after every body part, and it is working, look at that. They're weakening every body part of Sakura. And you know what? It's incredibly wise. <laughs> Both of these women are threats. Oh, I tried to go for a wicked kick there. Tried to knock poor Panette out. And you know what? These knees might knock poor Panette out. Goodness gracious. She's still standing. Tried to knock down Sakura again with that deep tackle. Oh, Sakura misses wildly with that kick. 
the combinations there by Panette, the brawler we were talking about, goodness gracious, is here rocking the jaw of Sakura. Hina forced to tag in. Oh, but that move misses. Panette in the corner. Panette down. Over. Ran through that hit by Hina. And hits one of her own. Gets all of that deep Superman punch. Panette trying to impress even more tonight. Saying, y'all remember I'm a brawler. You guys remember I got this in me too. And tags in her partner. Tags in Tamara. Here's the thing. She's against the ropes. She goes under. Everyone's run through those moves. Ooh, but got caught with that big boot into a pinfall. One, just a one count. Gonna have to take way more than that to take down the champion. Oh, but maybe I spoke too soon. Maybe that that's even gonna be a little bit closer to take down the champion. Got out of it. Starting to feel it in her arms, though. That's not even a... Keep that in mind. That's not even like a, a signature or finisher from Tamara. She's just been bopping that out out of nowhere. Big leg drop. Goes for the pinfall. Not even one. Tag team champion, Panette. Potentially future... Oh, the let him in submission. She actually might have to tap out. She may have to tap out. She does. Ladies and gentlemen, Tamara suffering a loss to Hina. Suffering a loss to the let him win submission. Is that going to be her fate at Ticket to Paradise? That is very interesting. That's going to be weighing on the mind of Tamara for so long. One has to wonder if Hina or Tamara will be able to choose the stipulation. Because like last year, there will be beat the clock challenges to see who gets the stipulation. One has to imagine after tonight, if Tamara wins, there's no shot that Hina will be able to use that let him in submission to get the victory. We'll see. <laughs> we will see indeed. There's a lot to think about after that one. As we watch our child back in. What the child? Tamara. Take another loss, but once again, they were they were up against a very dominant team in Sakura and Hina, but they wore Sakura down. That strategy didn't work out too well for them. But you know what? Kudos to Marin stayed out of that match. That wasn't even for their titles, however, this match is for the titles. So, well, are you ready? Wait, hold on. It took the titles off. There we go. Okay. Championship over here. We're the coldest day here, so we're ready. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time. Main event time. The thing you have been waiting for this entire time. Hold on, I got a message from Perk. Okay, you know, we'll talk about that after this, or I guess at the end of the show. We'll talk about that at the end of the show, ladies and gentlemen. We have ourselves a tag team championship match. What? 2v2. Titles on the line. It is Eggman Dottore versus Coldest Day coming out first. Former AWE champion. <laughs> Admittedly, Two-time AWE champion, Dr. Robotnik, Eggman. Now let me talk, let me walk and talk with you. Eggman, he's, he's a guy, he's a lad. <laughs> he is essentially a unit, not for nothing. Congratulations, Eggman may walk out of here as tag team champion. Could happen, but he's going to have to beat Coldest Day, and no one's been able to 
wave a candle to coldest day. They've only lost a, a like really like one match. Huh? One match. Huh? And that was two warmest dawn is what they called themselves. Uh, I like to call them the fire ferrets. Uh, Iro <coughs> and Gen. But they didn't lose to them when the titles were on the line, and that's what matters. And speaking of, here comes the toy. Now, one has to wonder, is he really thinking about this as an opportunity to win the tag team titles, or is this just another one of his experiments? I wish I could tell you because I <laughs> certainly don't know. But I guess we can wish him good luck. I suppose one has to wonder do we really wish this man's good luck? Do we really want him holding the title? Is he any better than Coldest Day? Yeah, I mean, I guess so. <laughs> I suppose so. But, like, maybe there's just no winners in this match. Notorious made a lot of enemies. And admittedly, he's made an enemy of Sonic.exe. I bet you Sonic.exe can't wait to get his hands on Dottore. Dottore who outsmarted him. Dottore who sealed away his world-ending powers. I'm, I, I, am I afraid for Dottore? No, I wouldn't say that. Afraid's the wrong word. Worried for him? I think that's the wrong word, too. I'm, I think I'm intrigued to see how it happens, or see what happens, and you know what? I hate to say it, I feel like Detori probably feels the exact same way. As he drinks in the adoration from the audience, he may even be controlling them, maybe he's using the sounds from this music to help control them. Hardwiring their brains to be Detori fans, some people yelling he he Detori may be their brainwash too. But here we go. Okay, Dory, stop. Dory, don't do that. You're gonna... You know, remember when I was saying some people say he... This isn't gonna help them. Come on, Dory, calm down. <laughs> Look at Eggman, at least he's behaving. Come on, Dory. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I need a drink. <laughs> Dory crawling into position saying... I'm looking to be a champion. And there he is. Well, uh, you know what, I can I can at least hope that, you know, this isn't what's going to happen. I don't know what I want to happen, admittedly. I'd be very curious to see how you're voting on the polls right now. <laughs> to, to say the least, I'd be so curious, and... We know how this ends. Look at that, the shackles on his wrist. The padlock around his lack of heart. Stops him from causing us too much trouble, but uh, we, we do still have to deal with this menace. Chimera. Show. Tucker. This combination of heathens have been holding the championships hostage for months, since Christmas. It was a nightmare before Christmas, at the fight before Christmas, when these two teamed up and won the tag team championships. And since then, not a soul has been able to take them off of them. This time, the Tore and the Doctor, who was Eggman. <laughs> Double dose of doctors are looking to be the ones. Now, Sonic.exe, he hasn't suffered many losses at all, to be honest. But, one person who did defeat him, the Tori, and inside of a steel cage, didn't escape, knocked him out cold, and pinned him. Can he do the same thing today? Let's find out. One fall! The Alliance prestigious tag team championship! 
It is a big fight feel. It's Dottore. It's Eggman. The coldest day. Prestigious tag team champions, the Cartel. Who would have thunk it? Let's see what happens. Let's see how it all plays out. It is coldest day. And it is four. Well, I guess, you know, you know, it's for the tag team titles. Clyde, good luck. It's going to be one heck of a match to call. I'm sure everyone's on the edge of their seats. Everyone has to think to themselves, okay, this, this could be it. This could be where Coldest Day lose their titles, but will it happen on the beaten path, or will they walk into Ticket to Paradise with those championships? That is the real question. Are they going to be safe for another month? Nobody's really hit a move. <laughs> Ooh, big German. Not even a German, more of a side suplex. Tagging in the Beast, the Chimera. Show Tucker. You know, it wasn't that long ago where, you know, <laughs> Dottori was being held captive, essentially, by Sonic.exe. And did you see that Sonic.exe just scattered out of the way and said, Nope, Show Tucker, you handle that guy. Boom. Perhaps he's afraid of Dottori. Perhaps. One has to wonder, could that be the case? I guess no. But we will see. Ah, uh, shot on the arm. Tornado kick to the back of Show Tucker. And it looks like Eggman, the powerhouse of their team, now getting tagged in. And the powerhouse takes it to Show Tucker. Big Bulldog. Slap to the back of the head. Show off. A show boating. I don't know if that's a good decision when you're dealing with a monstrosity like Show Tucker, but one has to say it's it's working. <laughs> At least it is for now, because right now, Show Tucker back in control and tagging in Sonic.exe saying, Alright, you can take care of this guy. I know you want him. But I think Eggman might have wanted Sonic.exe too. Dragged him to the corner said, Hey, second verse, same as the first. I'll drop you on this thing too. <laughs> Crazy elbow drop right to... Elbow drop into the pinfall? When we talk about Cheeky, I guess that's what we're talking about. Oh, now here we go. On the outside, both other competitors stunned, and now they're going at it. Eggman muscling Sonic.exe, dropping him on the barricade. Maybe when we were talking about the weakness of EXE, we really actually should have been talking about Dr. Robotnik. Because look at this, every move that Sonic's been trying to do to Eggman, it just has not been working. But Eggman tried to focus on Show Tucker, didn't work, and still able to handle Sonic. But now Sonic's starting to get a flurry, DDT, and they're at a six count already. They gotta get back in the ring. Eggman realizing he can't win this thing by count out. <clears throat> if he wins the match by count out, it is all over, it is curtains. They still retain their championships. Sonic has Eggman down. Drop kick, not even a drop kick, just a boot right to the side of the skull. And a kick to the back. Everyone taking a little bit of damage in this fight. This is an incredibly even tag team match as Show Tucker, the big beefy boys, both in the ring again and a spear taking down Eggman. Spear immediately taking down Eggman and a big slam onto the heavy knee. Already puts Eggman away for one, but just for one, huh? And he's going for a roll up here. Just a one count. Imagine. I have to always say imagine it was three because we've seen it be three before. Oh, and look at this. He has that deep in submission, or rather the claws of Show Tucker going deep into the throat, probably trying to cut off the uvula of Dr. Robotnik. He might not know where he is right now. He's saying, all right, now go pick up the scraps. Oh, but <laughs> maybe Eggman was waiting for him deep. Pull, hip toss. Tried to lift up Sonic.exe. It did not work. He might have been going for the eggplant. Or rather, the egg carrier. But now Sonic.exe is very much in control. So much so that he has Dr. Robotnik up. And Dr. Robotnik almost had to tap early, admittedly. 
but saved by Dottore, missing Wadley with that clothesline. Might be wise for Eggman to try and make a tag in uh, ASAP, but you know what? Admittedly, drop kick there, Sonic.exe, making the tag to show. No, doesn't make the tag to show. Was thinking about going for that 630, that pinball attack, but instead Dottore in the ring. But so is Show Tucker, and with that dodge, I was going to say it might be curtains for Dottore. All right, swing blade. Needle point drop kick by the doctor. Turns him around. And drops Show Tucker. Lifts him up. Oh, what is this? Measured strike. And everything the doctor does, very measured, very deliberate, well planned out. Just like those chops to the chest. Eggman's slowly getting back to his feet. Tsunatori will have some help if things go awry. But admittedly, he seems to be handling... Oh, don't tell me. You don't think he's going for... Sister Abigail move theft! Sonic.exe saying, absolutely not. There's no chance I'm going to let you do that. Climbs up to the middle rope. Dottori is taking it to show Tucker, but misses with that knee. But Dottori able to hit show Tucker before he hits him back. Holding on to the leg. And destroys him with those clubbing blows. Now Dottori starting to feel it. Starting to feel the power of show Tucker, but able to get the feet up. Looking to tag in Dr. Robotnik. A hot tag's been made. Sonic in the ring. But he gets all of that kick. And he's calling for that submission hold again. Oh, no. No shot. Did not happen. Able to get out of it. But he tosses the doctor out and says, Well, Eggman, it's been fun, but now you're alone in the ring with me. And that's where you will perish. Inverted pinball attack. Oh, but missed the elbow drop there. And gets kicked in the face. Hold on, Eggman. Has Sonic up. Lifts him up, and that's the Eggplant. Goes for the pinfall. One. Two. <gasps> Sonic.exe kicks out. Eggplant hit. But could he be thinking about the Egg Carrier, too? Has Sonic by the throat. Punches him right where the sun don't shine. I guess a little bit higher. The sun shines a little bit where you hit him. <laughs> Dottori tossed into the corner. But able to block that by Sonic.exe. Kick right to the jaw. Oh, wait a minute. We know Dottori has this move too. Is Sonic going to have to burn resiliency? He does. Sonic.exe pops resiliency in this fight. And just like that, the Doctors are one step closer to becoming new tag team champions. But it's going to be harder than just that. It is admittedly going to be harder than that. Oh, what is this? Going for a kick right to the face of Dottori. Gets all of it. Misses that double stomp, though Dottori on his feet. But Dottori misses that clothesline, and a tag's been made to the heavy. A tag's been made to show Tucker. And Dottori may be in trouble, gets tossed, and he's, uh-oh, getting taken out. The entirety of the added body mass of Sho Tucker, all colliding at high speeds on Dottori. As he gets rolled around, gets his neck yanked, cranked. It is not a sight for the queasy, for the squeamish. Oh, but Tori's able to get up to his feet, admittedly. But not for long, because the knees take him back down to Tori in trouble. Might have to try and tag in Eggman. Eggman, who at least has a finisher. Oh, but you know what? You know who else has a finisher? Show Tucker. And if he hits Dottori one more time, then we have a stunned Dottori. And there's going to be nothing he can do with Dottori trying to get into the corner, trying to just get away. Sonic, it looked like, thought about hitting Eggman first, and he might get decapitated with that leg drop. Dottori, at the very least, is no longer stunned. Sonic begging for him to get up. 
Oh, but a block there. Trying to hit a combo. Instead, hits a picture-perfect drop kick in between the eyes of Sonic.exe. But Sonic stands right back up, and he stands into this move, and now Dottori also forced to burn resiliency. Oh, but Eggman saved him. That didn't save him, really. <laughs> Admittedly, didn't really save him. Oh, knee shot to the face. Dottori's not been able to get any moves off. A tag in to Eggman. <gasps> DDT by Sonic.exe gets all of it. Eggman trying to get up. But right now, Sonic.exe is doing what he does best and devastating anyone in his path. We've seen him do this to Eggman before. And for the pin, that's one, that's two. Not tag team champions still yet. Eggman kicks out. Eggman survives again. And that's the best. He's the best at surviving. Especially the best at surviving Sonic.exe from what we've learned. Show Tucker sees the helpless Eggman trying to crack the egg as he slowly lifts up Eggman by the nose, raking the eyes. Turns him around, lifts him up, tosses him, and beats him across the ring. It's only a matter of time. Uh, dragging him over to Sonic.exe and they work together to try to destroy Eggman by the arm. He is stunned. Sonic going for the combos. DDT right to the head. Right to the head of Eggman. <clears throat> and Sonic immediately going right back to Show Tucker, which is smart. It is admittedly smart because, well, Eggman is in a little bit of trouble. Wait a minute. Ran into a knee there. <gasps> also use move theft. One! Just a one count again. Show Tucker's been hit with his own finisher on two occasions. On two different occasions. Big hits. Almost got the whole combo off. Show Tucker with a reversal. Strangling him and headbutting him. And goes for the pinfall there. Dottori immediately back in the ring. But Clyde in the way. Clyde was in the way. His legs got caught and Dottori couldn't reach the doctor in time. And so coldest day once again walk in to another live event as champions. It was a hard fought effort. Resiliency was burned on the demon sonic.exe but it still wasn't enough they are still tag team champions but now it's not a matter of will they retain <laughs> at this <coughs> pardon me at this point it's a matter of who's next who can even possibly stand up to them? Who can even think about beating them? At this juncture, I couldn't tell you, but that is our show. Uh, we'll go ahead and exit. It is WrestleMania weekend. Let's go through real quick all these things. I gotta go read you guys the message from Dirk Madison because he got an exclusive little uh, interview with Ryoma. From start to finish, Nahida survived. Asnir and Al-Haytham go on to Golden Ticket. Monica goes on to continue to compete for her shot at the Golden Ticket. <sighs> Ryoma fought strong, but the numbers advantage got the most of them. But we'll talk about that. Kana retained. Admittedly pretty dominantly, Makoto survived, but could not beat Glitched in a last man standing match. But Makoto, I'll tell you what, he got close. Uh, Sakura and Hina devastated Panette and Tamara, and Tamara was forced to let Hina win. Will that be the case at Ticket to Paradise? And last but not least, Eggman Dottore could not best Sonic and show Coldest Day still tag team 
champions. My gosh, we had ourselves a show, and the beaten path continues next week. This week, though. Yeah, Ryoma suffered a minor injury. I got that from from uh, from my boy. Uh, I guess we should go forward a week to see who also gets healed, but we'll see. Asnir suffered a minor injury. Well, he won't be competing for a little bit because he's going to Golden Ticket. Uh, Pablo's been cleared. He just got cleared this week. I guess a lot of people got cleared. Yuma got cleared. Sonic.exe was cleared. Oh, here it goes. Boss is cleared. Oh, here it goes. <laughs> and Queen is also cleared. Oh, here it goes. Um... Let's go to the next show. And then we'll look at our roster. Okay, well the next show is... <laughs> a, a joke show that we had because we had a Super Inferno show. So, I mean, like, this is what they would have booked. Um, which, honestly, not a, not a terrible not a terrible match here. <laughs> I, I feel like Mew and Makoto would actually give uh, Panette and Marin a run for their money. Uh, Hina versus Klee. Uh, might be nice. And then Yosuke versus Pablo. Yosuke, aren't you like hurt hurt? <laughs> Can't you not compete? Why do they put you in a match? <laughs> I thought he just couldn't compete anymore. Hold on a minute. I thought he couldn't compete for real. Yeah, he's no- Y'all. <laughs> Riddle me this. <laughs> Yosuke who is no longer medically cleared to compete, right? Okay, we're all on the same page on that one, right? We, we, we discovered that last time. <laughs> Yosuke, what you doing? <laughs> Bro, what you doing? <laughs> You're not allowed, roster. Uh, actually, let me look at the news. Someone else got cleared. Chihiro cleared and Arvin cleared. Oh, the good beans are being cleared. You'll love to see it. Um, looks at our power rankings. Who's at the top? Real still at the top. Kana still at the top. Queen still at the top. Uh, tag team champion still at the top. Hina still close to the top. Mona up here. Chie, Sho, Tucker. Uh, now, Katoko. Um... Who I think will be in action next week, question mark? Uh, Sakura. Still close to the top. Unlucky 13. Uh, Kazuchi got hurt backstage. Confirmed an attack by those devious two. Uh, Young Mitarai, Steve Harvey, Tokiko, how you, I'm um, behaving. Uh, <laughs> Katoka, Joker, and of course Sonic the Hedgehog. That's your top 20. And that is our show. We can watch out y'all me back on as we start to get things closed so what the i've been told backstage dirk madison is there conducting interviews and he had a fantastic time today outside of you know the people getting attacked as i start to mute and we start to put this premiere to a close he says and i quote Oh, we can put some music on. Let's actually... You know what? This is fitting. <clears throat> Ryoma said... He thought he still had a long ways to go. But in actuality, Kaito has a long ways to go. He can only beat him with other people at his side. He can only beat him with surprise attacks. And so... Ryoma said... To ask you to redeem that match that you promised him against Kaito. Which I did promise him. I said, hey, whenever you want it. And it seems he's decided. He said he doesn't want the numbers advantage. He wants it 1v1. And he wants to make sure it's 1v1. In a match that will give Kaito's heart a little scare. The same match that he lost his championship in. I want Kaito 1v1 at Ticket to Paradise. Hell in a Cell for the AWE Championship. Now, I'm gonna be real. Uh, <laughs> real, I'm sure you're watching this backstage. Um, I don't think Kaito deserves a championship match. <laughs> That's just, I'm gonna be real with you about that one, let's be honest. Let's be completely real, like, I'm gonna be real, I'm gonna be true. Um, but, it seems your heart is set on this. And you know what, I do kind of understand that if Kaito loses that championship opportunity to you inside of that cell. Yeah. Yeah, you know what? 
It's booked. No numbers advantage. No sneak attacks. Kaito, Ryoma, Hell in a Cell, Ticket to Paradise for the AWE Championship. That being said, in terms of other AW announcements, <laughs> next week you'll start to see your golden ticket votes compete, including Monica. Triple threat matches will have two next week, one for the gentlemen, one for the ladies. Um, the winners of those matches will, you know, fight the winner of the next double triple threat matches the next week. It'll be 1v1 on that front, and those 1v1s, whoever wins those 1v1s rather, will go on to the golden ticket match. And next week we'll actually decide just who will be fighting Marin and Panette in the AWE Tag Team Championship match at Ticket to Paradise. Who will face off against Racket of Psalm? We'll find out next week. We've got a couple of teams. They'll be going at it, and we'll see who walks out as the number one contender or number one contenders. It's a championship contenders match. It's next week, and I'm excited to see how it all goes down. Shall we? We'll see. Um, that being said, I think we're good. I think we're golden. Uh, we'll be doing the same thing for, I guess, <laughs> I guess we'll have to decide new contenders for, um, for, for Coldest Day because they are, <laughs> at this juncture, unbeatable. We'll see if we can find some way to take those titles, or not take those titles, but challenge them appropriately. That being said, I think we're good. I think we're all set. That's that. We got the votes that are fighting next week, and we'll actually be live next week. We'll have that live energy back. There's a different energy when we're live. I missed you guys on this. You know, you know, you guys were there. It's nice to have you for these wrestling events, because we all react together. I mean, I'm in the chat, and you guys are probably all retiring and reacting there, so I mean, that's fantastic. Next week, though, we're live again. That energy is going to be back. Me yelling at you guys for to behave? I couldn't do that. <laughs> I'm going to need to next week, because you know, I, trust me, I'm going to need to. <laughs> Until then, though, toodaloo, like crew. Thank you for watching, and until next week when we continue on the beaten path to Ticket to Paradise.